All right, we're going to continue playing some basic fantasy role-playing game this afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. Um, and just a quick recap from uh, the last session. Uh, I combined the two separate campaigns, uh, the two groups. Um, so we did kind of a little side mission, kind of had them do a little group bonding experience into a very deadly and dark dungeon, which ended up being quite uh, science fiction-y by the end of it. Um, however, the group did pull a couple retainers, uh, one being a kobold named George and a bald man named Jacob. Um, eerily bald, not anything against bald people by any means, just uh, he's very creepily bald. Uh, he's, he's like a future man. Uh, and they also found a phaser or a laser gun, something. Of course, they don't know what this is yet, but uh, very cool. So I think what we're going to have, uh, have happen, kind of what I want to do, as we'll say, a little time's passed. You've made your way out of this dungeon and going back to the home base of operations, uh, perhaps Emmy's theater back in town. Um, a little bit of time has passed. We'll say you've kind of gotten to know each other a little bit more uh, with the addition of Fergus and, uh, you know, Lauren. Uh, meeting, meeting with Sammy and all this and perhaps, you know, Lorsch is... Uh, Lorsch has maybe been out for a little bit, so we can maybe have her come in um, in a minute. Um, and then we're also going to add... Uh, Sean is joining the campaign again. He was in Robin Gregg's group uh, for a while. So he's going to hop back <laughs> So we're going to have him introduce his character in a minute. Um, but we'll start <clears throat> perhaps in Sammy's, Sammy's uh, theater. Yeah. Um, theater. Does it have a name? I can't remember if it had a name. Um, let's see. <laughs> it's going I just wrote the theater. So maybe I'll, uh, okay. I'll create a name for it. That sounds good. So, uh, but yeah, we'll start. We'll actually start with Sammy. So what, do, what are you doing, Sammy? We'll say it's, uh, it's an evening. Uh, you're in there with the... Uh, Perhaps with Lauren, Birgis, Paul Jacob, and George the Kobold. Right, so Paul Jacob has become the bartender. <laughs> he, he's, he doesn't really maybe understand everything that's going on being a future man. So he's a good bartender because he just listens a lot. And uh, George has taken up to uh, a, a cart on the side where he shines people's shoes. And, uh, you know, Sammy being this being her theater, she does like usually on the the end nights when it's most busy, she'll do her uh, presentation. But uh, normally, the minstrels, um, Rose and Silk, uh, do their little show. And Sammy's probably sitting back having uh, a drink and uh, eating large amounts of food. And uh, yeah, she's happy to be to be back and have new friends. Um, and she is somewhat. Uh, Thinking her mind drifts once in a while to uh, the fact that there's a gigantic golden door buried under the floor of the the <laughs> of the of the, uh, the the theater here um, that needs to be taken care of someday. But yeah, she's a halfling jester, mm -hmm. um, and her real name is Samia, but she goes by Sammy. Very cool. Yeah, and uh, perhaps the mystery of the golden door will be begin will maybe be dealt with today we'll find out um so then we'll, we'll pan over to uh let's say fergus uh how what's fergus doing in this uh theater slash he's leaning back in a chair at this moment and he's uh, shelling these peanuts and he's popping these peanuts in his mouth just one after the other as he's nervous about trying to figure out who this man is that he accidentally uh, knocked in the back of the head and knocked unconscious and trying to figure out who he is or what he's, what he's all about. And he's just sitting there and he's thinking about what the next step is going to be as these peanuts just go and the shells fall on the floor and he just one after the other and one after the other. And then he stops and he pulls up this uh, hood up even tighter around his, his face and he strokes his, two or three day growth of beard. He thinks to himself, ah, I guess I need to clean up just a little bit. And he's just sitting there and sitting there trying to contemplate on what's next. And I am playing Fergus Budge, Human Thief. Very good. And the uh, camera pans again, falls on Lauren. What is Lauren up to? Um, <clears throat> so Lauren as a ranger has never been that uh, comfortable or confident in towns. Um, and city so he is uh, sitting in the corner kind of nursing a beer quietly kind of whispering with his companions um, 
and generally just kind of waiting for the next opportunity to get out of town and kill something. Very good. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. Sorry, that's it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, he'll definitely have an opportunity to do some killing. Um, all right, so time, you know, the night's kind of going on, and then you perhaps hear the door bust open, and we'll have Lorsch enter. So, Micah, tell us about Lorsch. What kind of a mood is Lorsch in? What well, first, before you hear the door, you probably hear the wagon drive up in front of the theater, and you hear that's that it's a very heavy wagon and probably um uh sammy would recognize it immediately i assume for sure and shortly after the door opens and you get a glimpse of the wagon which is now parked in front and it's it's well you should call it a battle wagon because that's exactly what it is it has like three uh big crossbows mounted on it and a shield in front and a variety of skulls around it because some of them are rotted by now that they're, they're not preserved so we have a lot of rotted skulls and um heads of different kinds of humanoids and such and there is even a dragon head on it. Yeah. And the, the front crossbow shoots through the mouth of the dragon. I just remembered. Yes. So, and Lorsch is, as always, half naked. Um, she's an orc. Long black hair. And she was visiting with her clan. And now, right now, she's standing in the doorway and... and um, calls out sammy clan happy with with treasures i brought excellent we have to get rid of door sure uh <laughs> and she takes her her hammer from her back it's like a real big battle hammer she swings it soon yes who this? And she points at the others. So, uh, so Sammy says, "Ah, oh, while you were gone, I met some new friends, and we uh, ventured into a deep dungeon. This is uh, Lauren, the the the, the ranger, uh, which is good if we don't want to get lost. This guy over here is Fergus. He's um, kind of sneaky." And this is Bald Jacob, our new bartender. Look a little bit spindly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. Fergus is seeing this orc burst into the door. He just drops the handful of peanuts on the floor and he pushes his hood back. He just stares at the orc. He says nothing with just a sullen face and he goes to himself, he thinks. There won't be no sneaking up on anything else now. And she walks closer to you, leans down and looks you into into your face. And she smiles, crooked smile, with crooked teeth. And you smell that breath coming over to you. Yeah. Fergus reaches down on the ground to the peanuts he dropped. <laughs> and he picks them up and he hands you one and says... Would you like one? I believe these would fit you. And she, she takes it without looking away. Thanks. I hope you're sturdy enough for our next adventure. Always, my lady. Always. Lady. And she grins. <laughs> Tis a time for celebration. Bald Jacob, bring out the best wine so that Lorsch may drink and destroy things. <laughs> and you... <laughs> You would all look over and you would see this uh, future man, uh, this bald guy, walk over and uh, yeah, he'd be probably carrying out a platter of wine and maybe making a bit of a, me a mess, I would assume. He's, he's still getting used to his new duties um, while he's under his, his charm here. But uh, yeah, he'll bring you some wine and um, 
I so say you're all enjoying it quite thoroughly. Whenever some someone or something catches, we'll say, uh, yeah, Sammy, you catch something, a movement in the corner of your eye, and we'll introduce Sean's character, uh, perhaps coming through the uh, open door behind Lorsch. All right. So who are we looking at? What's his name? All right. And all this. Uh, it appears he doesn't have any like combat gear on him that you could see. He just looks like a common man. Uh, he walks through the door. He's, uh, I think uh, his name is uh, Marcus. And uh, <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> so he walks into the room and kind of inspects everybody, kind of like analyzes everybody. And uh, he says he's looking to hire adventurers to escort him safely on his uh, travels. Also, he's got a, a a scar going around his entire face. What'd you like at pay? The top of the head. Any treasures we find on the way, you'll take the majority. It's not treasures I'm looking for; it's artifacts. I glance at Sammy, raising an eyebrow. We could take the treasure anyways, though. Why do we need this man? See, I know the location of many hidden objects. I'm just not a capable fighter. Oh, location, to, uh... location. So, very nice. That seems reasonable. If there are any no. jester hats, I get first pick. <laughs> oh, that, that's completely reasonable. And uh, what is this character's name, Sean? And what's the class? So I can jot it down. I, really fast. I said Marcus. Oh, Marcus. Is that, is that, is that not cool? How can I say that? Oh, no, that's quite cool. Um, All right. What was it? Did you give a class? Uh, no. I, I, can I just not disclose the class? <clears throat> no, you're not. You're not obligated to. Uh, I'm sure to be. Prepared. Ah, you were that difficult guy. I remember. <laughs> 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 Always. Yes. No, I mean, it's, it's clear that Sammy is a jester. Yeah. Okay. Or somebody dressed very foolishly. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any distinguishing feature about you, Sean, that might give, might help with your class? Just oh yeah. No, no. Comes. He's got a scar. Just tell me what you're playing. What are you no, playing? I, I don't look like anybody you've seen before. No, my mannerisms might be uh, suspiciously <laughs> recognizable. But I do, yeah, the scar around my head, it traces the entirety of my face. Hmm. It's just like a circle around my face. Very nice. He's like a Frankenstein. Um, very cool. So, okay. So, um... Well, that's exciting. Right. We'll say this, uh... This is going on. <clears throat> Time passes. Perhaps uh, the drinking is merry. The wine is good. Jacob doesn't spill it too often. Um, and uh, I guess we'll close the scene and start it back in the morning. But uh, is everyone going to sleep at the tavern after a bender like this? Or would uh, anyone go back to their I their sleep in my tent. Yeah, I guess that's true. In the backyard. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I have a Okay, cool. I guess, but uh, before the <clears throat> night ends, can I like actually like get like an official contract from everybody for the uh, to hire you on as my adventures? <laughs> an official is everybody contract. officially? Is everybody willing to protect me on my adventures? Sami, uh, what, what is, is talking about? I don't know. This is a strange one here. What does your contract have yeah, worded in there as far as treasures? Uh, I need to know more about these treasures, and I guess you're providing upfront food, drink, transportation, um, all that, correct? Oh, no, that's all up to you. You don't need to read the fine print. Just here, take this pen and sign this paper. I'll, I'll worry about the details. When you hand him the pen, he drops it into the peanut shells on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take that as a no. And he looks towards Sammy. Since it's Sammy's establishment. Yeah. Stranger, are you sure that you were not found in the bottom of a dungeon next to Jacob? This is not how we do work here. Adventuring is a... Oh, no. Is a, a, a friendship. We, we travel based on trust. We cannot trust you. We cannot sign a paper that you give us. Plus, I don't know how to spell my name, but 
<laughs> yeah. It's it's not about trust. It's a purely business venture. You escort me on these uh, excursions, and I pay you, or I let you collect the gold you find. Yeah. So Sammy brings up her, her bullhorn, and, and she says, "So now it's like really loud." <laughs> it's based on trust. Well, uh, the, the trust is in the contract, my friend. Just sign here, and you'll have many, uh, many treasures to find in the future. Trust me. I look over at my bouncers. I actually take the pen and, and do an X on the contract, and then I I look over to uh, shit to the spindly man with the peanuts. And I whisper, if Lorsh not happy, hammer on head. Very easy solution. Well, it sounds good to me. All right, that's official. There's a pin on the paper. We're in business. Very good. So as these uh, sly business maneuverings... Trustworthy. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, the next morning comes, but uh, let's start with uh, the Sammy's Tavern. Um, banging on the door will wake up whoever is there. Um, so who would be answering the door, Sammy? Yeah, so uh, on Night Watch is uh, Orig and Jeffrey, my my two retainers, because um, they don't they don't drink. So they stay up and watch the watch the club once we're closed. And uh, yes, yeah, so probably Jeffrey would go to the door. And answer it. Very good. And uh, whenever you open it, you would see uh, you would recognize one of the dwarves from, uh, I guess, your party that uh, you had taken to go retrieve the door. Oh, uh, right, the tailors. Right, right. And nice. uh, have you finished my socks? And he'll dig into his back pocket and pull out a pair of finely made socks, although a few oh. threads are loose. But he'll hand them to you, and he'll say, "Yes, yes, best I've ever made for you." Oh, thank you. Yes, I, uh, I've done some investigating. I know you've been, and he kind of leans in close, thinking about the door, you know? And he kind of nudges you. <clears throat> and it probably wasn't very quiet, but he was trying. And he'll say, yeah, so some of my cousins' cousins, some of their cousins, they they heard of this, this one craftsman who, who we think would probably break that door down. He's supposed to be the best, better than me. You know? Better than you? That's it, it is. I thought I had never heard of anything like it. Like I said, a cousin's cousin, one of their cousins. You know, they they just they know someone. Are they local? Well, no, more local. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, no, no. They don't live here. They they were in town recently, but uh, it seems they've gone missing as these things. Tend to go. <clears throat> uh, hold on, and then he come in and have some breakfast wine. And uh, yeah, he'll, he'll sit down. so yeah, he would he wouldn't want to make any kind of decision by himself, so he would definitely get Sammy. And she she comes down. She's got uh, pajamas that are also look like a jester outfit. <laughs> uh, are you saying that we have to go to these people? Uh, Jeffrey tells me that this. Uh, can break down the door. Yes. Ooh, break down the door. That sounds interesting. Yes, yes. Turn it into the most valuable chunks of gold this land has ever seen. Do we need to move the door to them, or can we? Well, it's under pretty... better under better circumstances, I suppose the door could be moved to them. Although it is quite a piece of treasure to be transporting, but. Uh, yeah, you know, he would come here with a special hammer, but, uh, you know, he's been been kidnapped, so they say. What? Taken by slavers, apparently. Someone wanted his work for themselves in their own greedy way. Huh. That's unusual. People say dwarf slaves. They're yes, willing to work for free anyways, usually. I mean, yeah. cheap. I mean, uh, dwarves love work. Uh, that that we do, I suppose. Uh, it doesn't come cheap, though. You know, look at 
Look mm-hmm. at those socks I found your friend there. Yeah, that's, true, that's true. That's true. Uh, so are you proposing that we rescue this dwarf? Well, I think it would be the best way to get that door taken care of. And you know, it, it would be doing my cousins a favor, I suppose. Hmm. I'm gonna have to ask the brains of the group. Hold on. Yes, yes. And she walks into the backyard where Lorsh's tent is. <laughs> Oh god, you hear a grunting, snoring. So she goes. Kind of thing. Lorsh, are you decent? What's supposed to mean? I mean, how many men have you got in there? <laughs> uh, none. Perfect. Move. Okay, she swings the door open. Back entrance. <laughs> yeah, and you see, you see back entrance just closing. Ah. Uh, I think we have a mission. Not from your uh, signing yesterday, but uh, that needs some rescue. The dwarf that can help us with. She leans in really close. The door. Ooh. Well, we should do because we owe dwarves, you know, because of you breaking beer off. Huh? We owe the dwarves? Yes. Oh. The dwarves cool. in general. You broke beard? You're you're in trouble. Oh yes. That's right. There that was that was that me? <laughs> was that other I think so. Yeah. No, I know it was <laughs> Yeah, I think it was you. That was definitely No, me. it was definitely Sammy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought it was that guy with the with the blowing hair. <laughs> Didn't he do that? Jack Johnson. Or... Lorsch looks at you very <laughs> Intently, <laughs> she smiles. <laughs> okay. Don't anger gods. <laughs> yes, this is true. We have a debt to the dwarves. Um, I mean, not like I broke fingers off or anything. And then she turns and walks out. <laughs> yeah, Lord sh- shakes her head. <laughs> so she'll go back to the to the to the dwarf and say, uh, "Okay, wh- when should we leave?" Hmm. Uh, I need. Hold on one second. And he throws back uh, another goblet of wine. Then he he burps <clears throat> and he says, "Well, uh, as soon as you're ready, I, I think. How soon can you be ready? Do you need anything from me? I can. Uh, I got plenty of you know. Done a lot of knitting lately. Yeah, I could use the scarf actually. Have you got a scarf? Oh, of course I do. Of course I do. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come come by to my shop before before you leave town. Yeah, yeah. I get. A, I have a few other people." traveling with i think they'd be interested in this as well um, yeah, yes. <clears throat> yeah so give us uh, anyway i have to have breakfast and then second breakfast so uh sometime around uh, then it'll be lunch all right i'm just gonna have to take some food to go uh we'll come by in a little bit yes well you know where i'll be and he hiccups and hops off the bar stool there and <clears throat> waddles out tipping his hat as he leaves okay so this is good so I'm going to, I guess, figure out where everybody's staying. The mysterious uh, quest giver, I don't know where he's staying, but I assume the other two, uh, I, I know where they're staying because we've been hanging out. The yeah. first thing you would have noticed as you're doing this is you would have looked in the corner, the dark corner of your inn, and you would have seen Fergus spring up from one of the dark corners, freshly shaven, and he approaches you and says... So, you have work for us that maybe would pay a little bit better than that stranger we had in here last night? Oh, sure. Dwarves have all kinds of money. I've actually heard that if you cut them open, gems fall out. I'm not sure about that, but uh, if we ever run into a dead dwarf, we'll have to check it. I've heard that story before, too. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh May I take this opportunity to slip out from the darkness and say, no, I've tried it before. It doesn't happen. Really? Mm-hmm. I've cut open many a dwarf uh, unrelated to my current business, and I've found no gems inside. Hmm. That's strange. What was inside? Oh, you know, the usual stuff, guts, organs, uh, good good meat, you know, good meat for things. Bones. Interesting. Oh, well, I guess we won't cut them open then. But if we do, remember that we get that stuff, because that's not an artifact. 
Of course, and unless it's a magical artifact, you may uh, feel free to take any treasure or items as per our contract. Our contract? Do you hear him talking, uh, uh, Fergus? I think he's saying something. Um, I think he's meaning the contract that your large friend put the X on, but the X does not represent my name. Uh, nor mine. In fact, I'm pretty sure that her name is spelled two X's and a W. <laughs> Lord. Lord. Yeah, that sounds right. We'll worry about that later. Indeed. Mysterious. In any case, it looks like we're going on a journey. So if you Very want good. to come, this will be my journey. So let's have a contract here. And she pulls out a piece of paper. It's got doodles on it. Uh, pictures of like various animals. Um, okay. Uh, here's my contract. Uh, you can join us on our journey if you kill stuff when they're bad. And for that, you'll get a share of stuff. Hmm. Uh, I propose a compromise. Do they have to be bad to kill them? I mean, not that I'm have a compromise <clears throat> whatsoever. I, I can kill things, but do they have to be bad? Be, well, Bad as described by they're trying to kill us. How's that? Oh, yeah. No, I, I could. I mean, in, in the course of the event where I'd happen to have to defend myself in a combat situation, of course, I would defend the party. And I guess I'll, I'll sign with a, uh, a giraffe on your doodle paper. She looks at it officially in your pocket. Okay. This feels very official now having contracts. It's amazing I've gotten through all this adventuring enough without having one in the past. Wow. Ah, Jacob. over here. He doesn't seem to be the, uh, to watch the bar. Um, yeah, let's leave Jacob here. I'm actually going to ask Jacob, uh, Marcus, mm -hmm. to explain to me how to work the gun. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll show it to him. I'll be like, remember when you gave me this? It didn't come with any instructions. He'll squint at it and he'll say, ah, yes. A you said it was a weapon. It is. It's called a phaser, little friends. Huh. Now, if you see on there, there's a blue button, a blue, there's a switch. If it's, if it's pointing at the blue, it will stun your enemy. If it's pointing at the red, it'll daze them. Did I throw it at them? You could throw it at them. It is Perfect. kind of heavy. Okay. Fair enough. Be very careful with it. Okay. It is dangerous. Although right. it does not kill, it can be used to overpower an enemy. So I throw the switch, and then I throw it at them. Does it matter where I hit them? No. Okay. Perfect. That's idea. <laughs> All right, so she puts it in her pocket. She's pretty happy with that. Yes, um, yes. And I guess I'm going to, I guess, I mean, where's, do we know where Lauren is? Where is Lauren, Rob? Yeah, he would be like in an inn next door or as close by. Yeah. There would be like, like a roadhouse or whatever that Jack Johnson runs. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, <laughs> you know, slot the slot house. He has a slop house, kind of yeah. like a whorehouse sort of deal. Yeah. I bet Arnold would be hanging out there, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> like Arnold, the, the, the large retainers at the slop house, getting getting on with uh, Jack Johnson and all them. So. All right. So I guess I would try to assemble the. Uh, I'll send the kobold George to uh, to to assemble everybody. Yeah. Um. While while I eat first first and second breakfast. Um. And uh, yeah, I guess we should. Now we had packed up the door in a giant crate, right? Yeah, so I think you buried it, right? Yeah, and it was buried in the second part, and in the uh, the tavern that I was building as part of the theater, which we didn't finish because mm -hmm. it has a giant door in it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to somehow put that in a wagon or something. Okay. Well, yeah. you do have a wagon. Yeah, we have a wagon. Well, we have the battle wagon, which is how we took it last time, right? Right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I tell Lorsh. So we got to load this thing up. Um. Yeah, and Lorsch would get um, some oxen nice. this time for the, the battle wagon because I don't want to 
abuse the retainers all the time. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, okay, yeah, so we can get some oxen. The battle wagon. Can we all fit in it? It's pretty big, right? I seem to remember it being big. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if the door fits on it, I would imagine we all fit on the door. Yeah, we can just sit on the door. That sounds good. <laughs> right. I think I will get like four oxen then. I don't think two will be enough. Yeah, we should take horses too just so we have them. I think we've done in the past. Mm. Is this a big closed in wagon or is it open? Oh, yeah. Um, well, it's not exactly closed, but having so much around, like heads and, and a big dragon head and shield and, and shit, there is not much space um, above you, you know? Yeah, Fergus so. would definitely ride a horse then. He'll, he'll follow behind the wagon. <laughs> yeah, there yeah, is a distinctive too. smell to the wagon as well. Oh gosh, don't even mm -hmm. it's probably very putrid. Yeah, I think in general we'll take we should take enough horses just in case we have to separate anyways. So for some reason I have seven horses. Yeah, I was about to say I think you all have a lot of horses. Yeah, yeah. some of we recovered the horses. I wrote down seven horses, so I don't know where yeah. they came from. Oh, we got them from Napoli, remember? Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. So we get tons of horses for people to ride on. So if the, if our new uh if our new scarred friend needs a horse, um, yeah. you know, I'll say we I have a horse here for you. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, I'll I'll travel on my own, but I'll keep I'll be aware of uh where the group is going and kind of follow along at my own pace. Naturally, yeah. And I, and I think Lauren, every now and then you get slightest hint that you've met this person before, but uh, you probably brush it off. Okay. Not too obvious, but um, so uh, I think if you uh, if you if you start doing that, uh, Sammy would probably call back to you on the bullhorn. Uh, I generally kill shit that follows us, so be a little wary there. <laughs> oh, don't worry, you won't see me. <laughs> I don't like being followed. Now, which uh, really quick, just for bookkeeping purposes, uh, what retainers and hirelings and things are being brought? Just like so uh, to make sure I have it all jotted down. So, is this a long journey? Um, let's see. So you're going to have to go, let me see. You're going to be going, you have to first go south. You have to hit the river, take a small boat to the bay. So it'll be about half a day on boat to get to the bay. And then you have to take another boat, a little bit larger, to head to a cove, which is where the slavers have their keep. Or oh, hold on. Why are we taking the door with us? So we get know. all packed up and ready to go, and then Sam returns and goes... <laughs> oh, hold on, we're just rescuing this guy. We don't need to take all this. <laughs> then we start unpacking. <laughs> okay. Look at yeah, it. Uh, makes really, sense. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I, I'm going to take no part in the uh, unloading or loading. I'm just going to let my adventures do the work. <laughs> yeah, we take no. As per the contract. <laughs> we don't... Uh... We don't invite you as to be part of the door. Probably, to be honest, probably the door part of it, uh, not letting anybody really handle the door besides my retainers and, and Lorsch. Yeah. And the door is probably, probably, it's probably covered up, correct? Yeah. It's yeah. A yeah, so I don't even think um, most people wouldn't even recognize that it's a door or a oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. So it's it's a, a, can, just a large crate. <clears throat> so it's got like a, it's in a crate or it's got like a cloak over it or something? No, it's in a crate. Yeah, it's a big crate. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we just start loading up. I'm like, oh, this is my gear. And then we get it all loaded into into uh, Lorsch's wagon, and then we realize that that's probably not a good idea. So we put the door back. That, that, that looks like quite the heavy crate. Yeah. Uh, um, mind if I ask what's inside? No. This, <laughs> this helped us kill a dragon. No. So Okay, sounds uh, pretty valuable. Yeah, it's not magic, though, so keep the paws away. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not a thief, you know. You, you don't have to worry about me stealing anything. Well, I'm not worried about you. Believe me. Oh, that, that's good. I, I've slayed a dragon. Twice. <laughs> I've slayed two dragons. Twice. You'll have killed two. Yep. I think we'll kill it one time, but okay. I killed two. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, so Lorsch killed two dragons, but, but Sammy likes to think that she did it. Yeah, yeah. The legend now is perhaps that Lorsch has killed two dragons with her bare hands. Yes. Uh, with no armor. <laughs> Well, she has armor, just not on her boobs. Right, right, right. It's, it's custom armor. 
So that being said, I think maybe we need to be more stealthy. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so that being the case, I won't take the minstrels. That's why I was there. All that for that. <laughs> yeah, I won't bring retainers this time. The group is big enough now. Okay, cool. And I yeah, always get uh, confused. Quite large. Yeah, um, I think I will also not bring retainers because now we have fighters. Okay, what about uh, Robbery or Lauren? Is Lauren going to bring uh, Arnold or any of them, Sister O? No, I think if if everyone else is available, I'll just leave them behind. That's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, maybe they can guard the. Uh, yeah. I, I uh, I'm taking guard this crate and nobody knows what's in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely leave my retainers to guard the crate and with and I point out specifically that if anybody looks like this new strange guy walks near it to use the magic stuff that I have. But I also want <laughs> to uh, disclose right now. <laughs> right. Uh, I'll I'll nervously look around seeing if the retainers aren't coming with us and say, Are you sure this is enough people to protect me? I'm not much of a fighter. Nobody's protecting you on this one. This is not your this is not your thing. Don't you remember the giraffe you signed earlier? This is our mission. But I signed the giraffe right under the donkey. I mean, this should <laughs> offer me protection of some kind. If I read that contract, right? Not the contract was if things try to kill us, you fight them and then you get some of the stuff. No, I must have misread the uh, the tree and the sunshine on that doodle contract. Yeah. Sucks to be you, doesn't it? It does. It really does. Thank you. So that being the case, I'm going to take uh, just my pony. Take what? Sorry? I'm just going to ride my pony then. And we're not going to bring all that stuff with us, I guess. Okay, but uh, are you bringing the battle wagon or no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah, of course. Okay. I'll, I'll even say, like, you, you would know enough about the region. You've spent enough time here that, uh, you know, and, and you've been basically, you're going to be allowed to take quite a large uh, ship. Basically, to get to this cove, you have to go to. So perhaps a battle wagon could even fit on the ship. That's okay. so who, it better it? does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It will. It will. Um, you know, so it could either be used on the ship or you know, off the ship at your destination. I, who knows? I will take my parrot. Oh yeah, that's very fitting actually for a ship ride. I think. Uh, very cool. Okay. Um, any any other uh, things you want to grab in town? Oh. Tony, the um, the rod. I meant to tell you, you probably would want to go pick okay. that up. Yep. So that was a. Oops, what page? <clears throat> uh, yeah. So you can grab that before you head out. It was a rod of cancellation. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, its touch drains an item of all magical properties. Um, an attack roll is needed to touch the item. The item you want to drain, though. Uh, upon okay. draining it, the rod becomes brittle and can't be used again. Um, drained items can be restored by a wish from like a genie or a fridge or you know. Is it in the uh, the book too? Back in the back of the book? Yeah, it's on page uh, one thirty nine. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah, yeah, the rod of cancellation. That's a good item. Yeah, it's really cool. I like that one a lot actually. Fergus. <clears throat> You want store peanut supply on wagon? Oh, I'm going to leave the peanuts behind. I think we have enough circus um, act as it is. She blinks. Goes away. <laughs> we're not taking the minstrel wagon, because I also have a wagon, but it's, it's much more festive. Yeah, that's not, not for battle. No, not really. When Sammy says that to Fergus, he looks at you and he he nods over towards this new mysterious stranger and he gives you the look of that, that he's talking about that circus. Right, she laughs. Well played. Are you sure you want to gesture in, in, in the heart? Oh, maybe one day. I'll let you use the bullhorn if you want. I think the orc will make enough noise for all of us. Yeah, she, she's just, just climbing the battle wagon and you hear creaking and cronking and... <laughs> mm. And of course, a moo or two from the cows, <laughs> uh, from the, the oxen. Kind of makes me want to ride a cow. Are there cows available? Uh, yeah, it's uh, farmland. I'm sure there's cows. I'm gonna get a cow to ride instead of my pony. What? <laughs> I feel like when I see that, I'm. I, it seems like a cool thing, so I'm gonna ride a cow. 
but you have to tame it. What do you mean? Her. Yeah, I don't know. You could try. Um, yeah, it's know. a cow. What's it going to do? But cows don't know run, a, run in the wrong direction. It's not an elephant. I'm yeah. It's not an elephant. <laughs> Fine. You I should won't definitely get an elephant, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. You could get an elephant. No. Well, uh, could you? No, no. Forget it. I'll just... Maybe. <laughs> Look, you can try to ride the cow if you want. Uh, you... I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a cow and I'm gonna tie it to the side of the battle wagon and I'll just work on it every night and train yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. oh Jesus! <laughs> Thank God the oxen are oxen and not, you know. <laughs> well, we can raise our, uh, our own. Let's see. I'll tell you how long it'll take, just for reference. Uh, it'll take eight weeks of working with the cow. Perfect. I will yeah. start doing it now. And her oh name is Sheila. God. Sheila? <laughs> Can you milk her every morning for us to have fresh cream and milk? Yeah. Um, yeah, the, 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 the cobalt can. I take, yeah, I'll take him with me. Yeah, take all right, so I'm taking one retainer. I'll take the cobalt. George. George, all right. He's like a butler, basically. He's what? He's like a butler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that works. Um, okay, cool. So have, have we officially set out yet, or are we about to? Yeah, yeah. If, if unless there's anything else that anyone needs, uh, supplies, you can grab it. You all have so much money. Um, yeah, you know, so you can grab whatever you need. Um, otherwise, yeah, I say maybe start uh, start heading out. Um, so let's see. All right. So first, let me just check some things for the actual travel. So it's only going to be. Maybe two hours to the south to get to the uh, to get to the um, what you call it the river to get to the first first ship, um, and we'll say you know because of the size of your, the load of your of your caravan here, they've even sent perhaps the larger ship down the river instead of a smaller one. So let's see if there's anything that happens on the first hour. Aha. Aha. Okay. Cool. So as you're walking, or traveling, probably at a decent little pace, uh, let's see, you come across, wait, that's wrong, <clears throat> rather, let's see, everyone roll a d6 and tell me what you get, if you hear it. One. I got a three. Ooh, okay. One, one. A two. A two. Okay. Three. Two. Three. Three, two. Right. Yeah, three as well. So the, the single ones, we'll say Sammy, <clears throat> perhaps while you're sitting there mumbling some words of encouragement to, to Shiva, the cow, and you, you, you feel something rumbling under the ground there. Um, and it kind of feels like it moves under you. And maybe you see the dirt rise a little bit and it goes under. And then you see it kind of come up again a little bit of maybe five six feet away from you. Um, yeah. So I'll give you a moment to, to... Yeah, So I see that yeah. and I say, um, what's going on here? The ground is getting all bumpy. The orc moved. Be careful, spindly man. And, so uh, what is this? And I kind of try to point it out to, to, to whoever's around me, I guess. Yeah, and as you point it out again, uh, you'll spot it, and, you know, everyone can see it. And it, it kind of looks like uh, just, yeah, just like something's kind of moving under the dirt there, and it, it looks, you know, like a decent size. Um, and then you start to see more, and eventually you see seven of these kind of uh, little pockets of uh, dirt popping up in different areas, uh, you know, seven separate instances of it, I suppose. It seems very unusual. And as you're talking and waiting, you start to see uh, antennae pop up from under the ground. Eventually, you see seven sets of antennae. Hmm. Can okay. I try and shoot one of the one of the antennae? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, and shoot, and then we'll roll initiative. Uh, and we'll see what happens there. Oh, nice. 
two. Uh, uh, I guess if anyone wants to take a missile attack, they can, I suppose. So that's a 28, which I presume is a hit for six <laughs> points of damage. Holy crap. Oh, no, you need a 45. No, yeah, that hits. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, 28 and how many points of damage? Six. All right. Uh, also, is this a, uh, like along this path, is it like near a forest area or like are there hills around or? Yeah, so I was well, wondering. Like so, yeah, it would be kind of uh, more hill, more of a hills, uh, foothills kind of area, um, less less woodsy. Um, so it's kind of open. Um, okay. Slightly. I guess. Hills. I mean, there's there's pockets of forest and such. Okay, so is there like a tree I could be hiding behind and watching this happen? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And you're on this okay. hard path. I mean, I assume there's some bushes or something you can be hopping around. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I guess just to, while I'm describing, the weather is nice. It's kind of cool outside, slightly overcast, but there's still some blue sky there. A um, little bit of wind, not not a ton. But anyways, uh, so six points of damage there, Rob said. Uh, let's see. Okay. Could, also, could I also make an attack? Because since I saw it, or, or if that was... Yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. So... Okay, so Sammy will uh, look, at the, look at the thing and, and she'll say, these just look like reeking milk-livered measles to me and then she will sling her her stone at them and most likely miss horribly with a 10. the 10 does miss yeah. you're looking for an 18. Just oh yeah well, that one is just... um, okay so any other missiles attacks before the antennae burst out of the dirt I, I turn one of the crossbows mounted on the battle wagon into the right direction and release one of oh, the bolts. Oh, yeah. Oof. Very good. Let's see if I shoot Shirley. Hold on, baby. Uh, What's my... 16? Oh, it just misses. Yeah. Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> but a mad. lot of dirt flies around now. Dirt, you know, burst up. Uh, perhaps even revealing the uh, the first of these creatures, and you would see this. Uh, it's kind of insect-like monster. It has six legs, uh, and it's a crawl out of the dirt, and then they all follow suit. Um, they're about ten feet long by the time they're out of the dirt. Oh. Um, they look Jesus. Like they weigh quite a bit. Uh, oh fuck. And they're in clusters, you know, they're all, they're starting to all kind of pop up. Um, they have nasty, you know, like, uh, pincers in their mouths, you know, and, uh, you can see perhaps some, uh, some bit kind of drooling off of some of their pincers there. Yeah. So, uh, oral initiative as they come up, unless there's other, any other missile attacks, but, uh, so, uh, do I have to uh, roll initiative if I'm just hiding in the bushes? Yeah, or roll initiative just so we can uh, get to you. Um, okay, that's 1d6. Yeah, it should be a d6. So, roll the 3. Oh boy. So let's see. Uh, 2. Yeah, 2 for me too. Rob, 2. Mike, 2. Daniel. Nine. Wow, very good. Oh, very nice. Yeah, good initiative. Oh yeah, very good. And they're they're gonna be only four. Okay. Two. So, Alright, great. Um so the nine, yeah. Obviously it goes first. Okay. So uh you said they were in, in clusters? Yeah, so they're gonna be kinda clustered. So we'll have a group of three of them and then a group of three and then one by itself. Okay, so I'm gonna go for one of the groups of three. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna uh, reach into my shirt and pull out my, my Medusa medallion, and I'm gonna roll, come in closer and, and present it in front of them, and be like, um, "Take that, you fobbing elf-skinned dewberries!" <laughs> and assuming they can, you know, I'm making a, a scene, so if they're looking at me, um, they would have to make a save or turn to stone. Okay, great. So okay. let's see. Let me do that first. So. And I mean, I mean, I move, I move forward so that yeah. nobody from my party's in front of me. That way, nobody else from the party hopefully will look at it. Oh right, yeah, but, Samuel. Yeah. All right, so yeah, let me roll that real quick. So three saves. Come on, baby. Uh, 
All right, so the, the two of them pass, one fails. So one of them immediately turns to stone, and the other two kind of shrug it off. Okay, well, that's okay. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, nope. So we'll say one of them is stone in that cluster. Okay. All right, great. So uh, let's see. All right, and uh, Fergus, I think you're next. Yeah, seeing this happen, the first thing he does, being at the back of the uh, wagon, 10 foot behind the wagon or so, he's going to ride around the side of the wagon and seeing that the um, halfling has turned one to stone, he still rides up to where the orc is on the wagon. And he looks there and he goes, I think these things are too much even for you. We probably need to get out of here now. And he rides to the front of the wagon and tries to take off down the road. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah, you could uh, you could take off. Um, How many are there? there? Seven. Ten? Groups? Or? Uh, there's uh, two groups of three and then one by itself. Uh, ah! Yeah. Um, so Fierga starts to ride off. Um, and then it goes to the four. So their turn, actually. Um, so we'll start with... Um, hmm. Start with the ones that Sammy had a try to stun. So we'll say, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five of you. All right. So we'll say, uh, okay, yeah. So they're both going to go for Sammy. Uh, <laughs> sadly, uh, let's see. Are they larger than man? They are. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So they have a penalty to hit you, right? Well, there, I have an 18 AC, basically. Or you have an 18 AC. Yeah. Okay, so two and a three. Classic me rolling. Great. <laughs> so they both miss very poorly. Uh, probably distracted by, you know, your size one. So probably don't see very well. Their insect eyes. Um, then we have the one that Rob, or Lauren shot. We'll say goes for him. A 17. Does that hit you? Yes, uh, it does. That, that just hits you. Um, so that one will do its bite attack. It has two bites. Uh, so a total of five damage. Uh, as it pincers bite you. Um, so if it hits with its bite attack, it's going to grab you and start dragging you. It's going to try to <laughs> drag you into the tunnel. Oh, uh, so you're going to have to try to break the hold using an open doors attempt, which is a 1 on a 1d6, uh, and adding your strength bonus to it. <laughs> so drag down into an a insect tunnel. Um, so, uh, what's the so yeah, you're, you're grabbed by it, uh, this initial attack. Okay, so I choose 6, but I have no strength bonus. Okay. So, let's see. So, yeah, so I guess when it gets to your turn as well, you can keep trying to... Uh, Breakouts. So. Okay. All right. So then we have the other three. Let's see who they're going to go for. I'll put. Let's see. I'll put uh, Lauren on a one. Uh, what about the kobold? Is he in battle? Um, he's inside the battle wagon. I don't. He's the kobolds are kind of cowardly, so I don't think he'd really. Okay. Because there's five of you. So one, two, three, four, five. I'll put him on a. I'll put the kobold on a six, just as a possible target. So I can roll a D6 for this. Um, okay, so it's actually going to go through the cold one. He's three. Any sort of attack in the wagon. Um, and they all miss. Wow. Great. I'm rolling really well. So we go to a, a three, which I think is... Uh, Sean What's his name? Marcus. All right. Well, Marcus, uh, does he have to roll a uh, sneak check or anything to like remain hidden or... Uh, I'll give you this one just because you were already hiding before uh, the combat, okay. I suppose. But yeah, usually you'd have. I mean, typically you yeah. wouldn't be able to like start sneaking in combat. I don't think. Yeah, um, yeah. But I'll just say you're already but, hiding behind the bush. Yeah. Oh, uh, and they all emerge from like separate tunnels, or just like one main tunnel. Yeah, they all kind of um, their own little like tunnels. Okay. Well, I'll try to uh, sneak closer to the insects without being seen. I think that's actually really cool. So you have three of them kind of gathered around the battle wagon. You have one that's engaged, or one that's gripping uh, the ranger. You have uh, then two that were attacking the jester. 
Well, while one is occupied with the ranger, I'm going to try to sneak behind him without him noticing. Okay, what do you want to do to him? Because you're within range to, like, attack him. Oh, I do have a, a backstab bonus. Oh, you do? Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and yeah. do that, and if you want to backstab him, I'll let you do that. Okay. No roll for attack. I don't know if it's a free hit or not. Let me open the... Uh... Uh, I don't think it is, no. Backstab. You're an assassin now, so... For sure. <laughs> Um, so, no, no, you have to roll a hit. Okay, sure. roll a hit. Yeah. Okay, taser, attack, minus four, attack, eight. Okay, oh, wow, sick. Is this a once per day thing? Okay, wow. Yeah, I get a uh, plus four to hit, and he has to roll versus death ray, if I do hit. Okay. I rolled a 17 plus 4, so 21. Yeah, yeah. So he has to roll a save. Yeah. All right. Versus death ray. Mm hmm. Okay. And he is a level fighter. He fails. All right. So he dies. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is, this is made with my, my pin. That they signed the contract with. Okay, so out of character, tell me what class you are. You don't have to tell anyone in game, but what 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 class is it? Just so I can pull it up. <laughs> I mean, for gameplay reasons, I'm gonna say combat wise, I play as an assassin per se. <laughs> but you know. Okay, good. Yeah, I just wanted to, I just wanted to be able to pull it open if I have to check anything, whatever. Yeah, of course. I'm not gonna like rules not to you or anything, but you know. Just no, please do. Just hey, hey, no, I'm curious. Um. Okay, yeah, that's it, that's about what I figured you were. Uh, right. Very reminiscent. Um, anyways, okay, so this one will drop dead. We'll say, uh, Rob, you're freed as uh, Excellent. Out, out of the shadows, a familiar scent <coughs> of your nostrils as uh, you see this enemy. All right, and, and as, as I kill it, I grin with a maddened look on my face. Very nice. Okay, cool. Marcus brother, okay, well. I swear to God. <laughs> Sean, uh, I'm, I'm Mute meet. yourself. Your your chair is yeah. creaking like Sean, from hell. Oh, trust me, it's bad. We deal with this <gasps> all the time. Are, are you sure it's my chair? Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna unmute myself. I'm good. <laughs> Um, anyways, so, simultaneous, Sean. Yeah. No, no, that, that creek was an accident. I didn't mean okay. to. Uh, well, creak just it. mute yourself when you're not talking, though. Just for... Thank you. Um, whatchamacallit. Mm. Lorsch and Lauren, simultaneous. Uh, there's still... Want to go first? Yeah, Ladies first. Hands. Ooh! Lady. Okay, so... Uh, I jumped from the wagon. Uh, would I reach Sammy's um, insects with my jump? Um. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. So yeah. I swing my hammer. I jump down from the wagon and I place the hammer, hopefully, on one of the heads. Not on Sammy's, but on their heads. Oh, that looks good. Um, that's a. It's the mall, sorry. So that's a 17. And that is a. Miss. Goddamn. Needs an 18. You don't have any bonuses? Or that was with the bonus? I that guess. was with yeah, the bonus. Yeah, yeah. Damn it. So right okay. Right Again, off. into the dirt, and you see that cloud <laughs> of, of, of uh, dust come up. And yeah, surround yeah. Sammy. Right. Very good. Okay, so uh, Warren. Okay, so I would like to shoot the two that are near Sammy. Okay. Uh, or I'll just shoot one of them twice. Okay. Uh, and that is two misses. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so oh, <laughs> can he? Can he hear us? Oh, he shoots into Mooley. I know same team, but... <laughs> <clears throat> right. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, it's actually a good 
point. Always forget with basic fantasy. Yeah, I think there is a chance to. Let me see. Page 47. It is page 47. Okay, sweet. Okay, so. Ah, uh, yes, missile fire rate. I'm trying to find some shit. Okay. Sorry, let me just read the whole thing so I have it in my head. Uh, Don't worry. Okay, it doesn't look. Uh, this is a miss. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, fire eight. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I can't hit one of the allied creatures. Um, so you, I just have to decide if it's fired into a melee and attack misses, it may hit one of the allied creatures. Great. Um, okay. So who all is uh, engaged there? So it's going to be Lorsh, Sammy, and Sammy. Yeah, okay. So, all right. Let me tell you. Okay, so it's going to be against Sammy. Uh, yeah. It looks like you can make another attack roll, right? That's how it yeah. says. Yeah, yeah. You'd well, have to make... Yeah. Yeah, so Lauren, make another attack. <laughs> Let's see if it hits Sammy. Yeah, my AC is 16. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's good. Yeah, so Lauren, you can uh, shoot at uh, Sammy. Or roll an attack. You're muted, uh, by the way. <clears throat> Sorry, that was 19. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay, so how much damage? Um, oh, actually, it says I make the rules. Sorry. Yeah, you can do okay. it. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to roll it. I'm going to roll it all. So, scratch what Rob said. It was a six that I rolled, so it does miss. Okay, great. Oh, right. Okay, good. Um, okay, so it's an intentionally vague rule. Okay, I like this. Yeah, cool. All right, sorry about that. Yeah, I just need to refresh on these things. Okay, cool. So Sammy's fine. Um, I like that that way of doing it. <laughs> definitely. I mean, versus uh, just random. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so back to the top. So Sammy, as uh, these this arrow whizzes past you. Perhaps. Okay, so I've got two in front of me still, right? Um, yeah, you got two in front of you, and there are three surrounding the battle wagon. I'm guessing I can't use my sling so close. So, um, actually, can I? Uh, and they, I can't use the medallion again because it already passed its save. So, can I? Because um, I'm on a pony. Yeah. So what I want to do is uh, drop down on the other side of the pony so that the pony's between me and the monsters. Um. Uh, and try to uh, try to stab at it from underneath the pony. So basically, like, because it's big, right? So I'm gonna drop down to the ground. Uh, I don't know if I can do this all in one round. You tell me. I'm gonna drop down to the ground and go like underneath the pony and try to like stab at it from underneath the pony. So I have some cover. Okay. Know. Yeah, yeah. I, don't know if I can stab this round or not, but I want to go under the pony anyways. No, yeah, I like how that sounds. Uh, you can try. All right. So I'll just use my my. Uh, my sword because that's on my waist, so I just draw my sword and, and slash at it. Mm-hmm. All right, I might back up with the sword. Oh, but I rolled an eighteen plus two, so that's oh, nice. yeah. twenty. Um, it's it's, <laughs> it's a plus one sword, but I have minus one because I'm I have eight strength. Oh yeah. All right, so but on my die I rolled okay, so I did one point of damage, so not so good, but uh, I did hit something. Yeah, it's something. I'm sure. Okay. Now I'm under the pony, which hopefully gives me right. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think Fergus riding off. <laughs> yeah, he, he's ridden out 50 or 60 foot in front of the wagon there, and he stops and, and turns to assess what's going on, and he uh, pats his horse, and he whispers something very unintelligible to it that no one can understand, and the horse just stays very calm and peaceful as he pulls up his light crossbow up under from his cloak. Mm-hmm. He takes aim at one of these creatures that are probably in the middle. Um, as far as the one he takes aim at one, it's not engaged with anybody. Okay. Because yeah, he that's... unleashes his crossbow on one. Very good. And that's going to be a C19 to hit and it'll do max damage six. Okay, nice. Yeah, so that'll uh, 
pierce right into one of these insects uh, that's uh, kind of surrounding the battle wagon there, harassing the kobold. Um, okay, cool. So... Yep, and he just stays in that 50 to 60 foot range. Okay, yeah. That works. So from there, six to the four, so it'll be their turn. So we'll continue with the two, trying to get to the... Trying to snap at the kobold there. Um, these insects are pretty hungry. Kobolds look pretty good. Uh, a two and a three. Wow, really good. Um, so they both miss. And then we have the two that are still engaged with, uh, I guess, Porsche, Sammy. So we'll do a one through three. This one will attack a Sammy. A four, five, six will attack Warsh. So Lorsh, the first one's going to attack Lorsh. The second one will attack Sammy. Okay, so that works. So the one on Lorsh rolls a nine, which I believe misses. Yeah. The one on Sammy rolls a nine as well. Wow. Okay. So I'm, I'm not going to roll these dice again. You don't uh, keep those ones. <laughs> yeah, it works for you very well. No, so they both miss. Uh, and I think that's all the enemies actually. One, two. Three. Oh no, there's a third one on the Oh no, there's a third one. Okay, cool. Uh, sweet. So from there it goes to the threes, which I believe was uh, Marcus. All right. So Marcus will take this time to uh, harvest some blood from the uh, insect he just killed, if he's not uh, being aggroed oh. by the other guys. So you want to grab some of its blood, eh? Yeah. yeah. I would just take the turn uh, collecting blood into small vials, or at least a small vial. Okay, so the hmm. All right, so the blood. If it. Where, okay, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, it sounds good. Um. So then right. from there, uh, we'll go to uh, simultaneous Lorsch and uh, Lauren. Ladies first again, I think. Okay. So I will try again. To hit one of those attacking Sammy. Oh boy, what's wrong again? I, I remember that Lorsch was like never hitting anything. Oh yeah. And it continues now. So now she swings again and just hits the ground on the other side of the head of the insect. Kaboof! Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It looks very impressive, though. You know, oh, definitely. Pretty, pretty powerful yeah. swings, yeah. Uh, so, Lauren. Okay, so I would like to shoot at uh, the two or three that are near the wagon mm -hmm. um, that aren't engaged with anyone okay. or aren't engaged with anyone that we're concerned about. Uh, and that is a miss. Okay, sweet. All right, so from the twos, I think that's everything. So back up to the top, Sammy. Okay, so I'm under the horse. Yeah. And I guess I'm going to try swinging in with the sword because I'm too close to really do anything else. Right. So here we go. Oh, also not bad, 16, but that doesn't hit. No, it's just shy. Yeah. Okay, and mine's uh, Fergus. Yeah, he has uh, reloaded his light crossbows. He takes aim again at the same one that he's hit, thinking that it's probably the best target as he uh, definitely hit it good earlier. That'll be a 16. That misses, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I need an 18. Pretty close. Okay. Yep, miss in. Okay. So six, five, four. So the enemies. <clears throat> okay, so three more attacks from the kobold there from the ones trying to snap at it. A 20, a 9, and a 1. It's quite an extreme range. Uh, Alright, so one of them will do its bite attacks. Um, let's see. It'll do its... It'll do its uh, some bites. Uh, how many hit points does it have? Um, I don't know. I okay. have let's see. Probably not many. No, probably not. It's... Uh, Cobalt have like one to four hit points, some of that, and I'm saying, yeah, yeah. So, I guess I'll roll that now. Actually, yeah, I'll look for you. You have it written down? No, I'm looking it up right now in the book. Oh, okay, great. Did, I mean, if it could hit twice, it's probably dead. Yeah, it rolled seven oh. damage total. So, oh, yeah, it's dead. Uh, okay, there's no way a cobalt has more than seven hit points. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't think so. So, um, 
yeah so this these pincers grab it and it starts it pull it rips the kobold out of the uh, wagon uh perhaps killing it in the process uh, and, and this this guy is going to start uh, this creature's going to start trying to drag it underground uh seems satisfied at least um so as that one kind of slides underground with the kobold um the other two of course will turn to face the rest of you because they're still kind of hungry it doesn't seem like enough food to feed a litter of insects or uh, whatever you would call it. a hive i don't know so from there the four three so okay so uh marcus he yeah what are you doing are you still collecting blood uh, or do you want to attack there's there's still four enemies out standing around to uh, Sean, you're muted, by the way. <clears throat> yeah, so Marcus, um, if he's if no enemies are attacking him, I'd like to retreat now that I've got the blood <clears throat> and hide somewhere again. Okay, so you can uh, hop out of battle there and go back to your bush. Um, okay. All right, so then we have the simultaneous Lorsch and Lauren. So I assume ladies first again. Oh, question. Is that correct that I have a Medusa amulet as well? Or did you uh, just assume that uh, that Sammy took it? Hmm. I believe that there there is only one, but I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I thought. I don't. It wasn't. There definitely was only one. Um, okay, <laughs> then. Yeah, handed it to you at one point, but because it was on that that uh, that statue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then I delete this. Okay. Before I misuse it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about the confusion there. No. No worries. Jesus. Um. Okay, so let's try this again. Mm. You can do it. Oh yeah, this time I hit definitely. Nice. That's a twenty-one. Oh, wow. And max damage. I rolled a ten plus one is eleven damage. Oh wow! Die okay. you shit back. Very nice. So that, tell me how you how you smash this one. Um, yeah, like in the middle of the head, of course, and then. As that happens, as the hammer has already hit, you hear her cuss like shit, because of course she collects the skulls, right? right. So yeah, that's one skull less now. Very good. Yeah. Worse than one though. Yeah. Okay, so that was uh, that one is down. That's the one next to it. Okay, so uh, Lauren. There's still three standing, two around the wagon. They've turned to face uh, you guys, and then the one that's uh, in front of you and Lorsch. Okay, so I would like to shoot at the two that are near the wagon um, before they engage <coughs> before yeah. they engage with anyone. <clears throat> and that is two more misses. Very nice. Okay, so back to the Which top. Just terrible. <laughs> Sammy, as a uh, your ranger misses. Yeah, rangers aren't known to be good bows anyways. So not a big deal. So remember the horse, I'm going to take another stab with my sword, which I'm not very good. Okay. And I miss. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And uh, nine, so Fergus. Yep, same thing. Never crossbow bolt. Ah, uh, same thing. 16, so it'll miss. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the sixes, the fours. Okay, so we got the one... On Sammy and Lorsch, um, so let's see. So it's an attack Lorsch. Yeah. Rolled a two, so it misses. And we've got the two on the wagon, so we're going to say, so two of y'all are out of combat, this one's out of range. Okay, so roll a d4 for that. So it'll be a one, I'll say it's on, it'll go for Lorsch. Two, Sammy, three. Uh, Lauren, poor, uh, what's his face, Marcus, who's retreating, yeah, that'll work. All right, so, three, okay, who did I say the three, the three was? <laughs> well, wow, totally had a brain fart there. Lauren. Yeah, Lauren. yeah okay, thanks. So. Great. So, uh, rolled a three, nice. So, I think this, this die is weighted against me. Mm -hmm. Second one do the same thing. So D four, a one. So that's Lorsch. Lorsch. Yeah. Okay. And a seven. So that misses. Okay. Cool. So that's all of them. 
so Marcus, is, are you still continuing your retreat to get behind the bush? Yeah, and I guess once I get to the bush, <laughs> if I make it there successfully, I'll uh, fill my pin up with uh, the bug blood and whisper darkly to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So, All right. Performing this dark operation, it'll go to the simultaneous Lorsch and Lauren. Oh, no. Uh, there... Did I skip somebody? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Okay. Sorry, go. Not Lauren? Wasn't there someone on three? That was uh, the, the assassin. Not assassin. Oh, okay. Uh, um, yeah, the not assassin. Is there still... There's still one on Sammy, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. let's kill it. Next to us, yeah. Yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah, continue um, hitting the ground. Yeah, making your own tunnels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and Lauren, so there's... Yeah. Damn, so there's one near me, is there? Yeah, there's one near you. Um, and then there's the two. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's one near you now, yeah. Okay, so I would like to try and attack the one near me. Uh, no, that's a miss. Okay, good. Um, so back to the top, Sammy. Okay, so the one that just charged up to attack Lorsch has not uh, been victim to the Medusa medallion yet. So I'm going to hold it up and try to turn that one to stone. Okay, great. Yeah, so let me roll for that. Oh, man, that looks like a fail. Let me check for you. Yep, that's a fail. God damn it. Okay. Yep. So as I turn to stone, I say, take that, you weedy toad-spotted varlet. That was for George. Very nice. You know, that's the, so this was the one that you had been stabbing at? No, it's the one the one that just came up from the wagon. Or the one that just came from the wagon. Okay. Yeah, because the one that I was stabbing at already passed the same. Oh, yeah. So. yeah, yeah, yeah. Stone. All right, great. So that one is down. Okay, cool. So, Fergus, so there's, uh, there's only two left now. Um, yep, hopefully the same one. He's already got a bolt in, and maybe he can do it this time. Oh yeah, nineteen on the die, so like twenty. That'll be a twenty-three to hit. And oh yeah. Max max damage against six. Okay, great. So six. Very good. So that's the first hit on that one actually, but it's a nice little chunk. Um, let's see. From the six, fives, fours. Okay, so the enemies. Uh, okay, so we'll do the kind of the same thing. Actually, now that uh, the assassins retreated. Um, Okay, so we'll just have them attack the same people. So we'll have the one attacking, uh, let's say, Lauren rolls in 18. That's a hit. <laughs> so this one, it's only going to do a single bite. Um, okay. And, okay, so six points to Lauren. Oh, Ouch. Yep. And then the, the last one was on Lorsch, I think, is the, is the other one, Stone. Okay, so... Okay, a two. Good. Very good. So back to, uh, let's see, down from the four. So the assassin, the guy behind the bush. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to move and attack, or are you still busy with your vials of bug blood? Uh, I'm still busy with my uh, not-dark ritual. Okay, cool. So we'll come back to that. Um, so Lauren and Lorsch. Let's try again. Okay. Nope. Ah, it's, yeah, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> the dirt is okay. uh, caking you and <laughs> yeah. Lauren at this point. <laughs> um, I'll try and attack the one that's Attacking me. Ooh, that's a natural 20. Oh, nice. And so that's 26. And uh, five points of damage. Okay, cool. Okay, nice. All right, so back to the top. Sammy, so you only got two left. Um, they're both hit. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to stab at the one closest to me with because it's, it's right next to me, so... Mm -hmm. Sword again. That's what I have out. That time I missed miserably. Oh, it sucks too because it would have maxed damage. 
I got okay. five. Yeah. Uh, yep, same thing, crossing the bolt. That's going to miss this time. Okay. Uh, so these guys, I need to check their morale. Uh, things it should be lowered by one point, too, because I've been... Uh, sorry, you've been uh, yeah. yelling at them. Because they are cocker <clears throat> bugbears. <laughs> to you, they are. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so that was... Okay, so loud. Okay, okay, so uh yeah, one of them fails. Oh no, I guess checking the morale for them, both of them. Yeah, no, their morale they they their morale is broken, so they're gonna start trying to retreat. Uh well actually they are gonna retreat, it's their turn, so they can basically dive right back into their tunnels there. Um leaving all the hungrier. So you're out of combat. Uh, there's dirt everywhere, just because you know circumstances, and uh, lots of little tunnels. A dead kobold, and uh, one, two, three, four defeated uh, insectoids. Is the kobold still lying around? No, he was dragged into the tunnel for dinner. You want to take the kobold dead, were you? That was my buddy. <laughs> what? I know. I kind of want to get them back, though. Yeah, me I too. We're... I want. I want the the skull. No, cobalt. Yeah, but but I don't have one of those yet. We'll get one, but that. Shall would... we venture? Shall we venture into the uh, insect tunnels to save the cobalt? No, he's dead. They are pretty wide. <laughs> They're about I don't know, six feet wide or so. I, I guess it would take a particularly short character to uh, go into those tunnels. Yeah. Is anyone in? Uh, I am. Okay. So Lorish sticks her finger in one of the eye sockets of the decaying skulls on her wagon. And then she pulls it out again, and there's some goo on it. And she presses it on your brow if you don't run away. And she is chanting some, some guttural shit you can't even understand and you suddenly feel a bit better yeah let me see Ooh, max damage uh, hp not damage so seven excellent thank you very much nice. you're a grunt yeah you're gonna have to sacrifice a goat or something tonight i think but don't worry about that <laughs> <laughs> Or, you know, maybe a cow or something. Yeah, well, there's one nearby, right? Well, there is, but then we won't have any fresh milk. Plus, I have seven weeks, six days left to training it. <laughs> okay, shall we be off? That was uh, dangerous <clears throat> and uh, weird. Oh, and by the way, take your share of the credit uh, treasure there. I wouldn't want to dip you out of your contract. Oh, yeah, no, I... Um... I congratulate everybody and give them a single gold piece for defending me in that battle. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll say the battle, you know, it, it, it was pretty quick. This all happened relatively fast. Uh, so you're only maybe half an hour out of town. Um, so continuing on your way, I'll check a few things. You want one of these heads before we go? Oh, yeah. And I take some pincers and, and put them like spikes on the sides of the wagon. They have lots of legs, right, Marcus? Yeah, yeah they have six legs. <laughs> All right, I'm going to break off four of the legs and dangle them from the side of my pony, so my pony now looks like it has eight legs. Oh, my nice. God. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and they're pretty big. I mean, these, these creatures were about 10 feet tall, 800 pounds. How does the pony react? He loves it. It's probably running away from the legs all the time and doesn't stop <laughs> now anymore. <laughs> they're just dangling. I'm drop riding a giant insect. <laughs> you want to put some pincers on its uh, bridle? Uh, its, uh... Yeah, I feel like you might not go for that, but I would. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to push my luck. <laughs> Very good. And... I am sad about the kobold, though, because it's not often that you get a kobold like that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, kind of like that, that rat man, you know. Yeah. Really, uh, really sad stuff. He was a good shooter. He just died, man. Yeah. Hmm. Oh well. Yeah, such is life. Yep. 
Um, okay, so uh, continuing though, the um, the rest of the trip will go without encounters. Um, so basically, you know, the, the foothills, they're, you know, like the rolling hills kind of start to stop as you get to a lower elevation. Um, and after about two and a half hours or so, um, you do see the river ahead of you. Um, and you see the small town, you probably see little smokestacks with the little chimneys of smoke coming out. And uh, it's a very quaint, small, you know, little river village. Um, and there is quite a large ship, though. I think that would be the, the most noticeable aspect of it, so, which you would assume is yours. Um, and in no time, if you want, you can make your way straight there. Uh, you can check out the town. But uh, yeah, so that is what is ahead of you. If y'all want, we can maybe take a five-minute break. It looks like Mike is BRB. Um, so we can resign. We can resume in maybe five minutes. All right. Yep. All right. Good All right. One. <laughs>
Garrett, I'm back as well. Thank you. Yeah, I'm here also. Yeah, me too. Sweet. Okay, nice. Uh, I think we're all here. Brother, are you here? Sean? Hiding behind a bush. Probably. I have returned yes, from yes. the darkness. All right, so we're all here. All right, good. Uh, so yeah, so you get to this uh, this, this riverside village. You see your your large ship. Um, you know, you see the big sails and everything. Uh, there's a small crew on it, or you know, I guess a large enough crew to run the ship. Um, and uh, yeah, so what are you what are you doing? Are you, you want to approach the ship? You want to check the town out? Um, yeah, just tell me what you want to do. It'd be nice to have a butler. What? It would be nice to have a butler having lost the kobold. What? It'd be nice to pick up a butler. Because we lost the kobold. Yeah, Lor just stares at you. Mm. Maybe we can just uh, recruit some, like, town person to hold stuff. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let me see real quick. So the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the tavern. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I'm going to bust open the doors, and I'm going to say... Uh, you know, I got, I'll probably do a cartwheel because I do that kind of stuff. And I'm going to say, uh, come all to see the magnificent hero of the land, Lorsch. Who? Oh, would, God. Who would follow such a great warrior and carry crap? And everybody just kind of stops talking. You know, the little hum of, of uh, you know, kind of muffled talking and stuff stops. And, uh, you know, also the, traveling as well. Yeah, everyone just stares. There's mm -hmm. uh, not much of a response. Uh, one guy in the back kind of starts to clap, but no one joins in and he stops almost immediately. Yeah. Uh, does anybody look like, uh, I'm looking for like maybe a, a, a teenage boy that's looking to prove himself like that kind of kid. I'm looking for him around the my balling. Yeah, you'll see like kind of a younger guy, maybe in his early twenties or so, who looks uh bright eyed and perhaps optimistic enough. Uh yeah. so, so I, I I start walking towards him, you know, still juggling, and I say, uh You, I see in you a great hero. Would you like to join the quest? The quest for stuff that we get when we quest. He points, he kind of sticks, you know, his thumb in his chest and says, me? Obviously you. What did I do to, to deserve this? I can see it in your eyes. The future is, is right ahead of you. I can see you as a great warrior of the land. Well, and he kind of, kind of, you know, sits up a bit straighter and he says, well, you know, I was thought I was, I was special, you know, I thought I was different. You indeed are special, young man. What is your name? Jeremy. Jeremy. Soon you'll be called Jeremy the Great. And you hear quite a few patrons, uh, Snicker and the bartender. He looks quite bored. Uh, he's like leaning against his hand. He just kind of uh, grumbles something under his breath and then continues drawing off his mugs and stuff. <clears throat> this is how all great stories start. Someday you will come back and the town will have a parade in your name. Join us. Great Jeremy. And you see Jeremy stand up and his back is really straight and he says, See, I told you, and he kind of points to everyone and he says, I knew I was going to be great. Someone sees Jeremy's potential. That's right. And then I, I, I like start walking backwards, juggling, and then turn around and walk out, hoping he's going to follow me. <laughs> oh, yeah, he definitely follows. Uh, probably gives a few uh, dirty hand gestures to uh, some of the patrons in the tavern. Nice. As he exits. Okay, so we have recruited Jeremy. So I come out and I say, I found a great warrior to join us. And you see this kind of scrawny, you know, early 20s guy, uh, dark hair, light skin, uh, just, uh, you know, not a lot of meat on the bones. His mm -hmm. town isn't incredibly wealthy. Does uh, it look like he could swing a heavy pick? He could try. Okay. Sure. That's what I got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so I go up to the, the battle wagon and I pull, you know, I un, un, unwrap like a cloth thing that has my, my, my gear in it. And I say, uh, this is the named weapon, Giant Cleaver. 
and I show them this heavy pick. <laughs> or maybe it's giant clever. I'm not sure, but it's one of those two. <coughs> he'll, he'll grab it, and uh, you can see he's surprised at how much it weighs, and he'll say, "Oh yeah, I got this, no problem. I used to, I used to fish, you know, so I can swing things." Sounds awesome. You need to say goodbye to any young ladies or anything before we go. Maybe that would be too hard. He kind of looks off in the distance and squints his eyes and says, "No, no, they're all dead to me." All right. Okay, then we're off to the ship. <laughs> <Unless Great. somebody's laughs> <lost you. laughs> and as you uh, approach the ship, uh, you see, you do see that it's a it's a, it's a dwarven crew, crew of dwarves, and uh, one of them will. Kind of run down the ramp there, and he'll, I guess, walk right up to Sammy mm -hmm. and uh, extend his hand in a handshake and say, uh, well, I'm Captain Greybeard, and uh, you must be the great jester Sammy. I heard so much about you from my cousins. Mm -hmm. I do a really over-the-top, uh, like, pirouette, and then I and bow, and I say, nice to meet you, Captain Greybeard. But may I ask you a question? Was that always your name? Because were you born with a gray beard, or that just, like, came right... Uh, and he throws back his head and lets out a cackle, and he says, "Ah, you're funny. You're funny. Yes, yeah. I was. I was, in fact, born with a gray beard." And he kind of winks. Oh, fascinating. I've always admired dwarven beards, and I kind of look towards Lorsch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you? Have you, you ever touched one before? And he kind of strokes his beard, and it's, it's really—it's a massive beard, and it's nice and braided, and it's gray. May I? Oh yes, yes. Saw me. <laughs> so I look with a little devilish grin towards Lorsch, but then I touch it very nicely. <laughs> yeah, and you'll be quite surprised that it does not break off. Um, uh, <laughs> and you can you can see that he enjoys this. He thinks it's hilarious, you know. Yeah, uh, you know. So I introduce the rest of the party, and I say, "This is uh, <clears throat> these are the brave adventurers who who shall rescue your cousin's cousin, right? Cousin's cousin, yes." Ah, yes, yes. We hope he's still alive. He should be. I doubt they would kill such a craftsman. But you yeah. don't know, you know, these, these brigands, these pirates, whatever they be. Hmm. Rum runners and scoundrels, if you ask me. Yeah, you never can tell with a human type. No, no, you can't. He kind of squints his eyes and nods in agreement. Yes, uh, things are looking good today. The winds are fine. The seas are calm enough. Our ship's good to go. Uh, are you bringing that? Any points? Um, with his finger and thumb at the battle wagon. Yeah, Lorsh is already uh, steering uh, the the oxen into the right direction. Yeah, and he says, uh, "Yeah, we'll need that." He kind of he he snaps it or he claps his hands quite loudly, and he shouts back to his crew and says, "Help! Help them with the with the wagon." The, Get it on board. Tie it down. And driving over one of the bumps, <laughs> suddenly one of the, the crossbows releases one of the bolts. Oh, no. Kaboosh! <laughs> All right, make an attack. Uh, roll what? <laughs> <laughs> well, it shoots out, right? Shit. I mean, there's guys walking down the ramp in front of you to help, you know. Get... That was just supposed to be flush. <clears throat> <laughs> roll a team. Okay. So... You're all eight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have to do this. You know? But I hit perfectly yeah. the ground then, because yeah, that's yeah. what it was supposed to hit. <laughs> you know? So, so we'll say the dwarves dive out of the way as they hear it release. Uh, it's because snappy dwarves. Uh, however, the, uh, the massive uh, ballista missile. Uh, smashes into the ramp and splinters of wood are going everywhere and uh, it breaks the ramp in half as it plops into the water there. Uh, and, every, you know, all the doors are dusting themselves off and <laughs> there's, there's splinters all over the place. Uncomfortable silence, <laughs> I imagine. It, uh, I, I look around, I look at the dwarf captain and I say, uh, it's a formidable weapon. <laughs> And his face is just, like, emotionless, and he says, oh, yes, I see why you want to bring it. Uh, we'll need a little time to 
Just give us a minute to drop another ramp. Uh, I think we've got another one down down below deck. And he just nods to one of the guys up top who's in shock and they're freaking out. He says, go get another, another ramp. We don't we won't speak of this. Won't speak of this. Fergus is standing off to the side shelling peanuts. And quite a circus it is, uh, Fergus, I'm sure. You get the you get the sensation this is quite a circus. Um so let's see. Okay, yeah. So in no time they'll have another another ramp down. Um and they'll start uh they'll get the, the ballista up there, no problem, the battle wagon. Um I assume the cow and everything. Um so yeah, whenever you guys are ready, the captain says you can take off. Um it's a little past noon, it's about one PM. Uh, like I said, the, the wind is blowing, it's blowing easterly, and it's an it, they, these are average winds. Uh, however, you need to head, so you're going to have to actually head, so first you're heading, let me see the map, where am I? The winds are blowing east, which works well because you need to go southeast down the river a bit until you get to the bay, which will open up, and then you need to head to the western end of an island out in the bay there. Okay, so that won't be bad. All right, sweet. So, are you all ready for the the sailing? Oh, I'm ready. Everybody's ready to go. All right, cool. Yeah. So the the ramps will be brought up, and uh, I think things will be done. And the boat will will sail uh, off. The ship, rather, it's not a boat. It's a ship. Uh, I'm assuming that a heavy pick is a two handed weapon, right? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You wouldn't swing a pick with one hand. Okay. No. no. All right, so <clears throat> we'll not give him a shield then. Yeah, he's pretty scrawny. He probably wouldn't be able to hold the shield up uh, to save himself. So let's see. So this is a... Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, this is a small galley. So there's actually... Negative. Oh. It's, a, it's a caravel. So there's this crew of 10. It's 55 feet long, 15 feet wide. Yeah. Uh, hardness, HP. Yeah, it's a pretty nice ship, though. Um, the captain will... You know, be barking out commands and things, um, and he says it's going to take it's going to take probably the rest of the day to get down to the bay. Um, so you have quite a bit of free time on the uh, on the ship itself. Uh, if you want to describe to me what you're all doing, just in any order. How are you taking perhaps your first time on the river, or I don't know if anyone's had experience with this before. Uh, if there's like a below deck, I can kind of like explore and walk around. I'll be doing that. Yeah, yeah, there's a nice little cargo area for sure, and like maybe yeah, cruise quarters, and you know, it's not right, incredibly. Hang out around there for now. Just like yeah. look around. Very nice. Yeah, you can maybe get into some gambling or something. A couple of the guys. But um, yeah. Okay, so what is uh, Lorsch up to? Oh, Lorsch adds some puke to the water. <laughs> yeah, so. With all her might. Yeah, so you're probably heaving. Yeah. <clears throat> Orcs good. are in for water. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay, so yeah, we'll perhaps some of the one of the crewmen will uh, one of the dwarves will, will bring you over some really strong dwarven ale to maybe ease your stomach. And it <laughs> <laughs> goes right back into the river. <laughs> and he steps back and shakes his head and finishes up the ale. He carries about his duties. Um, let's see, what is Lauren up to? Is his mic muted again? Uh, I don't think so, Rob. What's Lauren doing? Are you there? Yeah, I'm sorry, you broke up there. I couldn't hear you. Um, oh. <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, no. Lauren is just kind of sitting at the at the bow, looking out over the over the sea, um, trying not to be sick. Um, and just about managing it, um, but really not a pleasant, pleasant camper at all. Yeah, uh, very nice. And uh, Fergus, have you been on a ship before? What's he doing? Fergus has uh, been on some small ships in the past, dinghies, uh, small boats that move fast, very fast in the water, but he has used it night before to, to help him with some of his... Um, Missions, let's say, let's put it that way. So he has a little experience on the water, but nothing to this extent. So today he's uh, kind of staying off to himself. 
is he's maybe sitting on a couple of crates and he has his hood pulled up tight around him. And his eyes are darting back and forth to this newest party member who has remained so mysterious the past couple of days is he's beginning to realize that maybe they do have something in common. But he's just sitting there. He's put his peanuts up. He's just sitting there idly watching this mysterious stranger. Very nice. And uh, Sammy, what are you doing on, on deck there? Right, so Sammy is, of course, a well-traveled jester, so she, she has no problem being on a boat, but she's now uh, trying to entertain the crew. Um, you know, at, at one point, maybe she tried to do an act with fire, but uh, they said that probably wasn't a good idea on a boat. Um, so she's gone back to her regular juggling balls. Very good, and yeah, it'll probably distract a few of the crew members. Um, they're probably really enjoying it. Probably don't get this often. Um, yeah, very nice. So, yeah, so it's going to take probably the rest of the day, at least until nightfall, which uh probably be around 7-ish p.m., so you got about seven hours, six hours ahead of you until um, so you get down to the bay. I'll ask, I'll ask uh, during my uh, show, uh, or after in between, I'll, I'll ask them uh, how often they encounter giant octopus. Oh, yeah. Captain Greybeard will step forward and uh, kind of look off into the waters there at the shore and probably just staring into nothing and he'll say, oh, a kraken. We ain't seen a kraken, but uh, uh, one of my cousin's cousins did. Uh, he never made it back. Hmm. It's supposed to be the largest creature in the oceans, you know, in all the seas. Hmm. Yes, I've heard they were delicious with butter. He kind of looks, gives you a Kind of a puzzled look, and he says, "Oh, have you? Uh, well, I've had, I've had the smaller octopi. You know, they were they were quite tasty. Why? Well, bigger would be more tasty, no? Oh yes, yes. Perhaps it would. You could probably feed an entire entire fortress of dwarves. You know. Hmm. Maybe but, one day we can find this kraken. <laughs> we maybe. Jeremy here is a great fisherman." Jeremy just kind of he says, uh, "Wait, what? What?" <laughs> Said my name. Uh, yeah, the, well, he's destined for greatness. We're working on it. Ah, uh, yes, Jeremy, the Kraken Killer. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, but he'll he'll explain. He's seen, you know, large squid and maybe some whales, maybe a few very odd, massive, gigantic fish. Creatures, but nothing, nothing terribly out of the ordinary. At least in his travels. All right, I'm going to make sure that after I have this conversation, that I go to where Lorsch is throwing up over the edge, and I say, uh, "Don't get too close to the edge." The captain says there's lots of giant fish and octopus and things like that around here. No fish will come close to Lorsch. Uh, Lorsch puke waterfall. <laughs> ah, indeed. You should try this tingly cold medicine that I have. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I'm going to hold on to this bottle of tingly cold medicine until... We, <laughs> until <laughs> I'm waiting to see if Marcus knows what it is because it's been so long. The cold medicine? Well, that's how you described it. Tingly like cold medicine when I tasted it. Wait, where did you find that? I probably have... Like, well, I want to say like the first session. <laughs> 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 Check your notes. No, no, I'm just gonna. I just saw it on my sheet. I was like, oh, I forgot I had that. I've probably written that down. Uh, yeah, I'll have to get. <laughs> I can't think it's potion of resurrection. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. You know what? You know what? Daniel, you know, we're gonna say it's a potion of resurrection. I don't know if oh. this exists here. But... Oh, oh, yeah. because I haven't. I haven't given you that in so long. I'll, I'll say that 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 works. That oh, there we go. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. I got so many scattered notes. Oh this, yeah, I can imagine from this campaign. All right, so now we have a note. Maybe I asked a wizard or something at some point. So I'm carrying it around just in case. I have almost a full book filled so far with <laughs> campaign notes and the uh, stats and things. But yeah, um, so let's see. Uh, all right, so I did the pre-rolling for encounters for the next six hours, and nothing happens the entire time. It is a very peaceful. Uh, peaceful journey at least to the to the bay and as you get down there you know the the landscapes around you are you know somewhat familiar i mean you've, you've probably all grown up been around parts of this region um the further you go the probably the more 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 uh 
unfamiliar it gets, but uh, you, you see the bay out there at the end of the mouth, the, the river, it starts to widen quite a bit. Um, and you see little settlements here and there along the river, homes, these things. But uh, when you get to the bay, the sun is going down over it in the distance. And uh, yeah, it's probably quite beautiful. Uh, it looks massive. I mean, it looks, you can't see an end to where the bay probably opens up into one of the seas, you know. Um, yeah, and Greybeard just points and he says, points kind of to the west and he says, that way, that's where we're going. There's an island back that way. Yeah. Where the fortress is supposedly at, uh, the island of Isolon. That in the chat. But yeah, it's supposed to be a rough place. These these rum runners have been using it, these slavers rather have been using it for quite some time. That's where my cousin's cousin's at. Who knows who else or what else? Do you think you're all ready? I mean, you look able-bodied. I don't know. Yeah, Walsh is very tough. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> and he kind of he leans into you, Sammy, and he says, you know, six hours of, of heaving like that. Do you think she's going to be okay? That's normal for her. Oh, okay, yes. Well, yeah. not everyone has the, the guts, she drinks. guts yeah. of us small people. That's the truth. Yep, and it's going to take, let's see, just for reference, uh, probably another two hours on sea uh, to get there, um, to get to the island. So you're going to be getting there in the dark, uh, which is probably to your advantage. Um, so let me do some rolls for that. As everyone, the crew is starting to direct it westward. It's almost making the uh, southeast, yeah, so let's see. Okay, so for the next three hours, probably more dry heaving from Lorsch is the only sound to hear. The crashing waves, maybe some sprays of salty water on your faces, and uh, the smell of fish and seas. Uh, perhaps, you know, the sounds of gulls flying above you or something. But uh, eventually, you will see the lights of the island before you see the island itself because of the darkness. But um, the captain will point and he'll say... Uh, Ah, uh, that's it. That's the slaver's fortress. You can see their their watchtower lights there, and you do see you see two like kind of tall towers there. Um, there's lights blazing at the top of them, um, and you you might even see like torches walking around the perimeter from where you're at. Um, and at this point, the ship itself is all it's completely darkened. Uh, I think the captain would have commanded everyone like no lights, nothing. Sails are about to be lowered, you know. So, uh, are, there, are there any, like, final preparations you want to take, or what's the, uh... Because what he wants to do is going to put you down kind of on the front of the island, the foot of the island, so you'll have to make a, a little bit of a walk to get to the actual fortress. That's it. He's going to set you away from the white towers, at least, so... Is there a general, general plan? I think we just turn up, kill everyone, rescue the dwarf, and go home. Yeah. Sounds about right. Do we have That's... a layout of the island? Yeah, so the island is a rough kind of circle shape, but uh, the fortress sits in the center of it. Uh, it's a bit rocky, and it's not a ton of cover. Um, the beaches, yeah, kind of rocky beaches. Um, let's see. The fortress is on the west end but more in the center, center west side of the island. So he'll probably put you on the eastern side. Uh, aside from that, so the entrance to the fortress uh, faces north. Um, at least like the large gates or what have you. Um, and... Yeah. Yeah, and we'll say the captain might even have like a rough map or something you can take of the island itself. Uh, but it's it's not very big. It's not terribly big at all. So uh, there's only that castle on it, yeah, more or less. Yeah. This old and does the captain fortress. know of any ways, other ways, other than the main gate to get into the fortress? Uh, he says that, you know, there he speculates that there would be, just because it's like a slaver's fortress, you know, but he is not aware of, like, the actual entrance, uh, like, secret entrance or anything. But... Uh, you know, he wishes you the best and assumes that you'll be able to find <laughs> find your way. Uh, let's see. 
Um, yep. Yeah. So I guess in no time he'll he'll drop you on the the eastern end of the island. So you'll have to make your way further west. Uh, and again, it's not big. Uh, it's a fortress. The castle is basically the biggest thing on the island. Um, so as they lower the ramps, um, he just wishes you the best of luck, and he says he'll go. You know, they're going to go anchor offshore a bit. And uh, he says, uh, whenever you're ready, light a lantern and signal me with it. Do you know how to, co you know, do you know how to speak with, with flashes of light in sequences? Uh, Lauren does, so Lauren will ah. nod and say, yes, we'll call you when the time is right. Very good. Very good. We'll be, we'll be offshores. If anything gets, gets too bad, if we, you know can't really help you so we will pick you up okay and um, before he goes um does he know how many slavers we're talking about yeah he says that the rumor is that there are about uh, 35 uh just kind of you know slavers uh and then as far as there's uh, the leader uh, whose name is his name is Morgoth. Uh, he's quite an an older fellow. He has one eye, wears an eye patch over the other. Uh, he's kind of the the ringleader. Um, Sharana is his wife, but also the second in command. And they have the thirty five henchmen, supposedly plus or minus. Um, and then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine kind of, uh, you know, under officers, people that work under the, you know, lower officers, rather. And then they have the, uh, the 35. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of people. Quite okay. Yeah. Well, well, hazard pay, I reckon you're up. Oh, hazard pay, big time. We figure, uh, I don't know, 4,000 if you get my cousin's cousin, uh, 1,000. Bonus if uh, you kill if you kill the slaver the leader Morgoth. Five thousand gold. How does that sound? Oh, I don't. It sounds like a good deal for you. Kind of strokes his beard. Well, what were you thinking? What does your your bands normally charge? <clears throat> Two thousand gold each would be closer to what we were used to. Hmm. Sounds reasonable enough, considering the force you're going up against. I'd like a boat. A boat? Yeah, I mean, I have a, a, a minstrel wagon, but a, a minstrel boat would be really cool. Hmm. I suppose this could be arranged. Uh... Okay. Sounds good to me. And he says, now... Or five, how many of you? Five of you. Gets me thinking, you know. I uh, wasn't going to say anything, but now that we're talking money, you know, uh, I might be able to dress you all up like sailors if you want. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they're hiring. Who knows? Just an idea. Just a thought. So. It will cost a little bit. So. Uh, Lorsch, you look like a sailor. Ah! Yeah, so your nostrils are met with the, the smell of vomit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't mind a hat, like a sailor hat. Yeah, yes, yes, well, it was just an idea. If you would like to, you know, dress as slavers or those looking to be slavers. <laughs> and he'll, uh, <clears throat> he'll snap and one of the guys will run, run down below deck and come back with a hat and plop it on Sammy's head. Nice. I wear it. Very good. Yeah. On top of my other hat. <laughs> so uh, the assassin actually has uh, a disguise ability. If I could utilize that here somehow. Oh yeah, absolutely. Looks like maybe you even like uh, gathered some of these items below deck. You know, maybe you got like a nice disguise kind of made up. Okay. Cool. And yeah, what about if we disguise as slavers and bring in? Some um, new slaves. Right. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, like ha- half of y'all could be like the slaves and a couple of us could be the slavers. Y'all could be in like fake yeah. handcuffs or something. Oh, well, good Sammy, you could take this uh, fresh young boy that you have. He, he he appears to have the strength of a of a new slave. Yeah, I'm real strong. Yeah, this is a good weekend. We can dress him like a slave. Uh, I mean, it's well known that halflings would never be slavers or assassins. So uh, I don't think that I would pass as a slaver, but I would, uh, I'm, might be a good slave. Okay, so if you and your butler were slaves Mm -hmm. and the four of us were slavers, that might get us in. Sorry, go ahead. I said, that was just going to say, that might get us in the door. And maybe I should be a slave too because they would remember if they have an orc in their ranks. If I pose as a slaver and they don't didn't have an orc, that might be yeah. You that know, give us a, could give us away. <laughs> and I, I guess an orc slave is a pretty common thing. So Yeah. Okay. So so who's gonna be the slave and who's gonna be the slavers? Sammy and Jeremy. Oh, Lord, Sammy and Jeremy are going to be slaver, slaves. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. Marcus, Fergus, and Lauren are going to be slavers. All right, cool. Okay, yeah. So they'll, <clears throat> they'll hook you up with the, you know, pirate-esque sailor attire uh, for those who want to be the slavers. Uh, now the slaves, um, you know, perhaps, you know, you give your weapons to your other you know, party members or something, but... Uh, oh, hell no. I don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess you could hide them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a sling. I, I wrap that around my wrist or whatever. Very nice. Um, yeah, I so... The... Yeah, I think so what you're saying makes sense. I will leave my... I'll give my... Uh, I have a short sword plus one. Does anybody not have a magic sword? That I trust? Uh, well, they, I mean, not that you trust, but I don't have the sword. I'm not giving you a knife, so I don't trust you. You come off as a trust. Okay, I'll keep it. You present yourself as untrustworthy, she's not going to trust you. <laughs> I mean, that's nice. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in the, yeah, the battle wagon, I'm sure you can find a reasonable explanation for having that. <laughs> Yeah, perhaps we can make the slaves uh, push or carry, the, uh, I mean, uh, drag the wagon. Yeah. Mm. And I would give my weapons, which are um, a maul, which is glimmering eerily, and a silver maul to um, Fer- Fergus. Fargus, Fergus. Good lord, lord. Maul probably weighs more than he does. Yeah, but 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 you're the only one she trusts right now. You you made an impression on her. Yeah, you'll try to uh, swing it across his back. (laughs) Yeah, it's the peanuts. Exactly. I like the way everyone is with teeth. (laughs) <laughs> oh. So the plan is we put the weapons in the uh, the cart there, smuggling them that way. No, no, well, because the wagon will be in the yard, and that's not where we start fighting. So like... <laughs> yeah. No, so I think yeah, we should carry the weapons. Um, the slavers should carry extra weapons. Indeed. Shouldn't we, should, we should look at a place doing that. And I will suspiciously not be carrying any weapons because I am untrustworthy. Well, they don't trust me either, so don't you know, don't get too offended. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sneaking off the bottle of blood, you know, in the middle. Of it's, it's not. Uh... Well, how, that's. Just, I mean, I could just have an interest in the, the local fauna and species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good will trust. <laughs> You're a bit of a fast talker. Yes. <laughs> He's a fast talker too, so she doesn't trust other fast talkers. Okay. 
Alright, cool. So, so that's the plan, eh? Yep. yep. That's the plan. Alright, cool. Yeah, so you can uh, yeah, you start making your way with slavers leading the slaves there in the wagon across uh, the islands. And then, uh, yeah, in no time you'll see the, the fort itself um, quite large. Uh, page. So, let's see. Um, and as you pull up, uh, you'll see the entrance. Uh, the, the fortress itself, uh, it is obviously quite well fortified. There's lots of, you know, every window basically has arrow slits, arrow slots all over the place, every wall, every tower. Um, there's a few, um, quite a few. Before we get super close, can I do something? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm 90% uh, invisible, essentially, when I'm outside, if I'm hiding. So I want to, like, as we get like kind of close, I'm gonna say, let me just scout ahead a little bit first, just in case there's like 50 guards sitting there and we're gonna be in trouble. So if everybody's okay with that, uh, Sammy would disappear into the bushes because I'm 90 percent invisible. So yeah, do it. Yeah, and I'll 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 uh I'll do a quick recon. How big is this place? Is it is it would would it take me a long time to circle around the entire place? I want to see if there's any other entrances. Oh, uh, let's see. It's about, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Maybe 400 feet. Okay, I think it's nine, so I'm good. Feet or so. Yeah, it's pretty big. Um, what did you want to do? You want to circle around it? Yeah, I'm just going to stay in the bushes and circle around. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll there's say a chance of them seeing me, but I rolled a 90, so that's way, I'm super hidden. Yeah, no, you're fine. Yeah, you can, it'll take a little time. Yeah. Depending on how, how long you uh, how fast you move. But yeah, you can definitely circle around it. Uh, get a get a feel for it. I just want to see if there's any other ways in or out. Any windows, things that I might notice that we could see from the back that aren't in the front per se. Okay, so and everybody's gonna walk up the front, so I wanna make sure we know what the back looks like before we How's about uh, you can roll a spot hidden uh, four times and I'll let you know. I'll give you four opportunities to spot stuff. How do I roll a spot hidden? Uh, actually, I'll roll for you. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so you do notice on the let's see, so the entrance is on the north. So, so, I'll see this. so on the western wall, as you're kind of making your way around the building there. Uh, through the bushes, you do see, um, yeah, you do see what looks like uh, it could be a, a, a secret entrance. Yeah, you definitely oh. spot it. Perhaps light coming through, like, a, you know, the door outline in the stone or something, you know. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. And nothing else on the other sides? No, no. Okay. Not, not to your eyes, at least. Yeah. All right, so I, I cruise around and do all that, whatever, I'm gone 10, 15 minutes, whatever it takes to do it, and I come back to the group. I say, um, okay, so oh, how many guards did I see in front? Or were there none? You don't see any, uh, at least right up front. Uh, okay, so they're, there probably, are... not the door, they're probably come. Was it, the, was it a moat around the building, or was it just a, a door? No, it's just the, you see, there's a large, whatchamacallit, so where am I? Uh, yeah, just very large, uh, you know, gate. Um, and there's two guard, like there's two like little smaller guard towers on each side of the gate entrance. Gotcha. Uh, and you can see like the flicker of like torchlight inside it. Uh, but yeah, you don't see any guards outside at least. Um, the gate itself is down. Um, right. And there's a lot of sand in front of the the gates. Sand. Tons of sand. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll come back and. And tell the group that. So I'll say, well, we could stick with the plan. Um, it looks like there's only two small towers there, which maybe has one person in each or two people in each or whatever it might be. Um, it does seem occupied, but it, but it's closed right now, and there's sand in front, which I don't know what that could possibly signify. Um, and, but there is actually what appears to be maybe a, a secret entrance on the west side. Hmm. The sound of you mentioning a secret entrance, Fergus Fergus looks at you and he goes, 
you know, it's usually best that um, we go into the quiet of the night and, and use the surroundings as you speak of. I would definitely be for going the, the quieter route. And he looks back towards this mysterious figure and he goes, what about you? Marcus? Wait, who's, who's mysterious? Oh, I'm the mysterious figure. Okay. Yeah, I'd say that's, <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's definitely a, uh, the way to go, though. I suggest we still bring our uh, the chains and the uh, disguises as a plan B in case we get caught while uh, inside the place. Uh -huh. Yeah, makes uh, yeah, that makes sense. Both plans. Yeah. Um, but we will just have to leave the battle wagon here and collect on the way back. Yeah. We'll oh, Lorsh looks concerned. <laughs> oh boy. I say we put it in the bushes and we throw some like camouflage over it and we make sure that the ballistas are pointed in the direction of the building. So when we come running back, we can jump in. Yeah. <clears throat> I really want to disguise it very well. Yeah. Well, we have an assassin who can help. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, an assassin-like person. Yeah, just, just somebody who uh, happens to have assassin-like habits. <laughs> Mysterious stranger. Um, the other thing is to... Um, I mean, we could leave Jeremy with it, just in case, if we think. Or, I guess, think. not that he could do anything. Well, if we rush fleeingly out of the, out of the castle... He could release some bolts right. on on our pursuers. <laughs> I agree. So maybe we maybe we can while we're covering the wagon up, like we're, um, maybe we can show Jeremy how to work the the crossbows. I like that. Yeah, I'm sure yeah that works for me. Yeah. Sammy's feeling a little bit bad about the fact that this guy's probably going to die, so she's she's like having second thoughts about bringing him inside. <laughs> <laughs> Not unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if that's a plan, if you guys want to do that, then we could we could certainly. The only thing, the only, yeah. the only thing is, I say this like while Lorsh is like covering the wagon. Lorsh is not particularly stealthy. <laughs> wow, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you got two like kind of sneaky, thiefy kind of people. You got the half line, which is super sneaky outside, and and a ranger who's going to be. <laughs> So, I think yeah, but it's much better for her to be not sneaky inside than for her to be not sneaky outside. Yeah, I agree. So we can cause all sorts of havoc once we get through the gate. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm ready to do it. Yeah. I wonder if there's any way we could. If so, is uh, your retainer is he uh, going to be staying behind with the wagon? Yeah, I think he should stay behind with the wagon to like cover our retreat with the with the ballistas. I wonder if there's any way we could like signal them while inside to shoot like the ballistas at the wall as a form of distraction. Oh. Hmm. I mean, I do have a, I do have that a could be useful later on. A parrot? Can you talk to this parrot? I mean, sure, parrots can talk. He's better than parrot. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, you were training right. him actually. Almost, right? almost, I've had this parrot for a while now, so I could train the parrot to fly back to the wagon if we need it, and then I guess we could just say if the parrot flies back to the wagon, then he'll just shoot. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Yeah, so if he sees the parrot, he should just shoot the bolts at the gate. Yeah, because I'll just send the parrot up. It doesn't have to be that. I'll just if I whilst we watch the yeah, yeah. night sky, if you see the parrot fly up, make sure it's my parrot. I, I tie like a little <laughs> ribbon to it. God only knows how many parrots could be on this one. <laughs> okay, that's the plan. Okay. Right. So are we all in agreement on the plan? I think so. Yeah. Yep. Yo. All right. So, so yeah, who who's leading the way? Who wants to lead the way? Yeah. That well, would be Fergus. Yeah, I was gonna say since the door like has to be. <laughs> okay. So Sammy, you can lead him, I guess, to the uh, door there. Yeah, I'll bring it to the you know to the general area and point it out. Okay. And let him go first. Unlock it before we get to before we go out into the open. Because I'm assuming there's like open area around the door, so mm -hmm. let, let's let him get it open first. As you lead uh, Fergus up there, he looks towards you, Sammy. He also says, um, just remember, part of my um, contract, as we shall say, even though it's not written, is the uh, first little bag of um, gems or jewelry that I find is mine. Yeah, I remember that. 
Okay, I, I know halflings have good good memories. I just wanted you to remember that. Yeah, don't worry. That can go towards the bill from the bar. Okay, go for it. <laughs> okay, so you want to go check the door. <clears throat> okay. And it is absolutely a door. You get that impression. And it looks like it could be pushed open. Um, and when you push, it is locked. However, you do see a lock hole if you look hard enough. Keyhole or a lock. Well, I guess I should try to open this the hard way then. Okay, Mark, what level is uh, Arvisa's spear right now? What's. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I forgot to tell you, Sean, because uh, you're just level one right now. Um, yeah. Do level. I want you to as uh, you start at level four, I think. Because yeah. it's mostly yeah. important for my abilities, like chance of yeah, success yeah. rules. Yeah, sorry. Totally forgot about that. My bad. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, um, before, which I assume you're going to try to uh, pick the lock, uh, Fyrgis? Correct. To stop you and uh, offer to remove any possible traps that might be on the door beforehand. If you would allow me to do so. Well, thank you for the offer. Any assistance is quite quite welcome by me. And he steps back out of the way. All right, Marcus, I'm going to go ahead and roll to uh, remove traps if there are any. <clears throat> yeah, which means I'm going to have to roll a 25% uh, with a 1d100. Sounds good. I rolled a 37, so I either don't detect any traps or fail to remove the traps. So Yeah, you're not entirely confident either way, but um, yeah, you you don't sense any traps. You don't feel any traps, uh, click or anything. Yeah. So. But either There's way, I, 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 I say should be safe. Even when, I, when I hear him say that, and also seeing the hesitation of his actions, um, <laughs> I look back towards it myself, and can I use my um, remove traps? Yeah, yeah, go for it. I got 40, 40%. Okay. Ha! Huh, 88. Okay, yeah, kind of the same. You're, you're, you're unsure. You're uh, you know, not too confident about it, but you don't feel anything necessarily. Yeah, and I don't, I don't even hesitate at it, it not, it not wanting this over maybe challenge her to, to see me hesitate. I just immediately know and go and open it. Very nice. Let me see. Yeah, and the, the lock clicks open and nothing happens. Oh, ah, well, God. thank you. you. You definitely cleared this one. That's, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Did my best. Okay, so let's see what you're looking at. Uh, okay, so you are looking into a, well, a dimly lit room. Um, it's, it's a five by five little hallway, um, entryway, I guess. Um, and there's a another passageway that's not lit, uh, maybe ten feet ahead of you. Um, and you're and just for reference, like uh, you're, you're on the west side, but you're kind of in the northwest uh, like corner of the building, basically. So you're heading southeast um, down this hallway. That's what you're looking at. So it's like a how long is the hallway? Uh, it's about ten feet until it goes into a little bit more darkness that branches off directly south. Okay. And is it like a stone wall, stone passage, or a wooden passage? It's stone, yeah. It looks pretty old, looks, you know, quite used. Um, the floor itself is definitely, uh, you know, lots of, uh, looks like it's been walked on a lot. Things have been, you know, drug through there. Um, okay, and do I see any recent tracks on it? Yeah, you would see some that look perhaps uh, some sand and maybe some water. It's not quite dry all the way. Okay, so it's used regularly. Yeah. Okay. So I'll nod to our uh, hazard pay friend and suggest that he goes first. Yes, I will continue. Thank you. Yeah, and fear gets heading down uh, about 10 feet. The passageway, like I said, breaks south. Um, it's not lit. Uh, there are sconces where torches could be placed in the walls. Uh, 
Now this goes down about, let's see, this is five. And this goes down about five feet, and then you see a, a padlocked door, and this is a very thick looking, like iron banded door. It's wooden and iron, but it looks, uh, they're not padlocks, but uh, you can see that it's more than likely locked. Sorry, I guess there wouldn't be a padlock on that side, but. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, to approach it, seeing the, the thickness and, and stuff of this door and knowing that maybe it would keep more sounds hidden from this side. I want to move up to it and and uh, listen. Yeah, and listening, uh, you don't hear anything on the other side, just silence. Yeah, I'm going to start looking at it and see if there's any way to, um, to try to open up a lock or try to, to get through the door easily. Because I'm thinking in my mind of, of the orc behind me and knowing that she's probably thinking just run up there and smash it with her maul. <laughs> yeah, you better be fast. <laughs> <laughs> she is quite good at breaking doors. So uh, you could check the lock if you want, uh, or you could check the door. It does appear to be locked. Um, it has a, uh, like a keyhole in it. Um, this looks like a much finer uh, sort of lock than the one you just uh, picked, but um, you're definitely welcome to try it. Yeah, looking at it, he doesn't even think at this time of it being trapped. He's thinking being on the interior of it, it's probably a little safer, and even though he's pretty wise, he's just going to attempt to open it. Oh, man, 44 out of 45. Nice, nice. And, uh, yeah, I think yeah, you're quite surprised that, you know, you barely make it, but uh, you do feel it, uh, you do feel it uh, coming undone, you know, when you're with your tools there. I let out a, a sign of relief at knowing that we're not going to hear the crashing of the door that would have came next from Lorsch. Yeah, yeah, and as you think that, yeah, you can uh, feel the lock being, you know, it's finished, it's unlocked, for sure. Yeah, I will proceed to open it cautiously. Very nice. And uh, as you open it, uh, nothing springs. Um, and you're looking into a, you're facing south. You're looking into a five by five, just kind of little storage room, it looks like. Uh, though it is very dark, but you, you do see, let's see. You do see three large bags uh, resting in the room. Um, they're large enough to where they, they almost fill up like the entirety of the floor there. I turn around and look at Sam and go, do you want to pick which one is mine? Uh, no, that's okay. Take whichever one you like. They are kind of large, though. I thought you should do this for a small bag of jewels. Ah, well, since it's not a written contract, you know, um, I guess definitions can come either way. It's true. I'm going to approach the one on the left and, and open it. Okay, so this one has... Let's see the first one on the left. Yeah, this one has uh, just a ton of silver in it. Silver pieces. Um, quite a bit. A lot. It's a very big bag. Yeah, is it heavy? too heavy to carry? I mean, it would be too much to... Uh, it's pretty heavy, um, the amount of silver it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, you'd have to... Have to the entrance, though, right? Right, right. Like you could pull it out for sure if you need to. You could to. drag it out and put it in the woods. But let's yeah. see what's in the other bag first, though. Yeah, I look yeah. towards the rest of the party and say, ah, I've opened up mine. Uh, the other two you can look at. Is I put a mark on this one to indicate mine. Oh, you want to silver? No, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> does Emmy look to, to see if anyone else is going to try to open up a bag? I'll try the middle bag. Okay, so Lauren opens up the middle bag. This one, again, is very large, very heavy. Uh, bag there, and this one is full of gold pieces and more like probably three times as much gold in this bag as there was silver in the other one. That's pretty good. These guys are rich, okay. And then, Sammy, do you want to do the turd? Uh, sure, why not? So, uh, I'll um, I'm just gonna pull out my sword and, and uh, kind of take the edge of it and like lift the ba bag open and kind of peek in there. <laughs> Yeah, the first thing that would that would catch your eye would probably be the couple hundred or so platinum pieces resting on top of uh, one, two, three, four, 
a lot of a lot of gems, lots of gems, lots of gemstones, very nice ones. I just set it down very gently. I, I put my sword back in its sheath and I go, all right, I guess this one's mine. <laughs> the, I didn't see any magic items in there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, oh no, the party is entitled to all oh, treasure. I just want the uh, artifacts. Yeah. I was uh, I wink when I say it anyways. We always split everything. Well, except for the thief, he takes what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but, but I say this one. This one looks like it's. Uh, if we have to take only one, sorry, uh, uh, Fergus. If we only have to take one, well, I think we should take this one because it looks to be the most valuable. But uh, you'll get your fair share. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, before, um, before we move on, uh, Lauren would like to suggest that we move these three very heavy bags back out to the battle wagon. We could do that. In case we need to leave in a hurry, at least we would have something for our trouble. Uh, Lorsch, my dear, we need your assistance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I'm not opposed to that. Being probably the weakest and smallest, I think what we could do is if you guys want to do that, we can get outside the door and I'll stay in the bushes and watch this entrance to make sure nobody comes in and out while you guys bring that back to the battle wagon. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll stay behind and watch the door we haven't gone through yet. Yeah, I'm actually going to stay inside also. Okay. Oh, can they carry the two of them? Carry three bags because there's only. The yeah, yeah. Lors, Lors is really strong too. So. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Um, it would be a little slow, but yeah, definitely. So once we're outside, I'd like to move half of the silver into the gold, the bag with the gold. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. So that bag will be that much heavier. Yeah. But Lars is carrying that bag. Right, right, right. So yours is, <laughs> yours is definitely uh, much more uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. feasible. I'm carrying the light gems. Yeah, I'm weak. <laughs> yeah and Lars, your bag's pretty heavy. But uh, I think you manage, no problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we'll say that takes uh, maybe 20 minutes or so, all said and done. Um, yeah, so you've collected all this. <clears throat> I'll throw it in the chat, I suppose, what it is in just a minute. But yeah, so you have all this, these sacks. Um, basically, you've, yeah, you found their treasure, their treasure store. Um, it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, there was one more door in that room that leads out, obviously. In which direction? It's facing south. It's on the south okay. end. Yeah. I'm actually going to start um, to examining it while they're uh, moving those bags out, if that's okay. Yeah, and this store, surprisingly, uh, if you kind of mess with it, you would understand that it's not locked. Um, and it could be uh, pushed open um, in front of you rather than cool. So... But yeah, it's not locked. Uh, there's no resistance when you kind of tinker with it. Yeah, I'm just going to sit there and listen at it until the rest of the party returns then. Okay, cool. Let's see if you hear anything. Probably hear Lorsch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would hear the stomping behind you, uh, clouding your ears from hearing anything on the other side of the door. This <laughs> 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 Lorsch returns. Um, but now nah, you don't you don't hear anything on the other side at least uh, immediately. Yeah, and like no patrols walk by or anything while we're watching the inside or outside. Surprisingly, no. Um, there hasn't been there hasn't been any sort of <coughs> uh, around the perimeter of the the keep itself, the fortress itself. Um, hmm. Yeah, for better or worse, but uh, no, nah, you haven't seen anything. So what would you like to do? Uh, do you want to go through this door? Yeah, after the party returns, I'll, I'll push it. Okay, yeah. And this one pushes right open. And you can see that this door, uh, as you open it, from the outside, it looks like it uh, was uh, part of the wall. So this was probably a hidden door that they expect no one to find. Uh, it's very, very smart pirates and slavers. Um, so as you exit to your right, which would be uh, to the west, and to the left, uh, 10 feet down in each direction, at the end, there are doors. Um, you can see the latches there, the handles, rather. It uh, looks like they could be pulled open. 
Um, the floor itself, uh, it's it's kind of dusty, but at least in the center of the, the aisle there, it looks like it's been walked on quite a bit. Um, again, there's probably some sand and mud and, like, debris from outside that was, you know, dragged in. Um, a few that, you know, perhaps kind of recent, but, uh, but yeah, so you have a door to your right and your left, east and west. <clears throat> yeah, as he approaches and sees these two doors, the first thing comes to um, Fergus's mind is is seeing Sammy had opened the, the bag on the right that was the more uh, filled one that had more treasure, so he immediately goes to the right door. Very nice. So you turn to your right. You go to the right, which is to the west. Um, yeah, and this one, of course, uh, looks like it could just be pulled open. There's no locking mechanism on it, <clears throat> at least on this side. Um, so do you want to listen? you want to open it? Um, Feeling fairly confident, he um, reaches for the latch to pull it open. Okay, great. And uh, as it, you know, I guess you probably don't, you know, yank it. I guess you're pulling it kind of slow, yeah? Or Exactly. Okay, great. Yeah, so it's quietly opens, and you're looking inside what looks like, uh, it's like kind of a workroom or a study or something. Um, you see a work table in the northeast corner, lots of books, papers, and a sort of glassware on top. There is a bed uh, that resides diagonally across the room. Uh, it's in a state of disarray. The sheets are just unmade. The bed's unmade and all this. The pillows don't even have cases on them. Uh, the walls are lined with paintings. Uh, most of them are really poorly executed, incredibly poorly executed. Um, and lots of them are in very bad taste. Uh, Lauren might even recognize the hand of the, that, that, that did these paintings. Uh, from a certain mayor from a certain town. It looks pretty familiar. It's about that level of, of bad art. Okay. Um, <laughs> my trigger some PS PTSD there. But uh, no, there is uh, someone sleeping in the bed, though. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, and then you see, uh, let's see, you see an older fellow. Looks like he's snoring. Um, oh, he's quite old. Wow, yeah. Um, and he's sleeping, and he's snoring. Uh, he's in a robe. Uh, he has one boot on. The other one's on the floor. One of his socks has a massive hole in it, and his toe's sticking out, you know. He's, he's a big mess. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, there is a door on the south, uh, in the southern wall. Yeah. Hmm. So we're just peeping through the door, not walking in. Yeah, I think that's that's where y'all are at. Yeah, that's just looking in the room. That's what uh, we're seeing. Yeah. Oh, I suggest to the party that we could get some pretty important information on like the location of other uh, dwarf and other things in that room, but we might have to take care of that uh, sleeping guy one way or another. Uh, I guess he could have one chance. Uh, I could approach him and and put a dagger at his throat, and if he wants to yell out, it would be the last thing he ever yells out. Uh, but if he does want to cooperate, uh, uh, may I, may I, may I, uh, Ben? I know that you uh, like to result in violence all the time, but uh, I have a certain way with people, and uh, we could probably uh, mm. convince him, shall we say, to work with us if we can get him to not scream immediately. So possibly uh, hold him down and cover his mouth until I am able to work my, let's say, uh, magic. Of, of course, uh, dear Sammy, I, that was a, my deal. I will approach him and hold the knife at his throat, and you, you, you can have your one shot. I hope it works. Hand over the mouth. Hand over the mouth. Good, sir. And knife at the throat. Sure, yes, that, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Should we have Lorsch do it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Lorsch okay. not good with dagger. Mm hmm. I see. I see. The uh, okay. Do not slip. We need this man. Okay. So that's that's the plan, right? You're gonna go in. Like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to approach him, and if I can, to to put a dagger to his throat, and, and at the same time cover his mouth, and yeah, you know, and I'm gonna, does, I'm gonna if he yeah. does resist enough, maybe Lorsch can help hold him down until Sammy does what she's gonna do. Well, I'm gonna use my ring of human control. Um, oh. assuming he's got more than five hit dice. Um. He'll, it's a charm person spell, basically, but it can do up to six hit dice. But I already have the bald guy under control. So I can do five hit dice. Mm -hmm. uh, 
see. They save versus spell. So they're, he's going to get a save. If he's five foot dice or lower, he gets a save. No, he gets a period. Yeah. 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 So he gets a save versus spell. All right. So yeah, we'll say Fear has uh, probably has done this countless times. You know, as a, as a thief. You know, uh, creeping into the room like this, and uh, yeah, we'll um, go ahead and give him a save as you all kind of get into your position. Um, and he does pass with an eighteen. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't. And actually, I was just read too that he would get a bonus anyways because we're threatening him. So actually, it wasn't the best way to approach it. But <laughs> right, right. So the spell doesn't work. So I go. Uh, Okay, try your way, and I step back. <laughs> does he does he scream out? Don't Marcus, or what does he do? Has his reaction? After yeah, that? I was gonna say as he uh, feels this this uh, magic try to take hold on uh, take hold of him, uh, which is obviously ineffective. He uh, he kind of starts to sit up. I mean, you can see that he's he's waking up very quickly. Um, so I'll give you a second to react how you want. Yeah, as he's sitting um, up, I, I'll scream at Lorsch. Um, hold his arms. <laughs> Yeah, I, I jump on his arm, more or less. <laughs> yeah, and he's a, he's, a, he's a frail old man, so you can hold him down, no problem. Uh, and he begins to start to, to, to shout. I'm going to pull his dirty sock off and shove it in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. As uh, a horrifying smell hits you yep. as you remove the sock, uh, you stick What's it in his it? mouth. I drink with Laura, should I smell worse? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, should I sleep in a tent? So. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, yeah, he, he, he's he's gagging and you know, mumbling behind the sock. His eyes are wide, and then they squint as he kind of calms down, and he doesn't look very pleased. And I whisper into to his ear, "One more scream, it will be your last. All we need is information, and you may live to see the morning light." His eyes get wide for a second, and then he slowly nods and understanding. Marcus, while this is going to go on, because I shoved that in his mouth, and since my spell didn't work, I'm a little, I'm a little bit mopey. Uh, but I'm going to go to that door and just stand by and be listening while this is going on to make sure nobody sneaks up on us. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, so far, you don't hear anything, um, but uh, it's probably a good idea. Yeah. All right, but I'll be doing yeah. that. And during the interrogation, I guess once he's held down and submitted i'll uh, take the time to look around the room see if there's any documents or whatnot yeah, you, you would get the impression that uh or just from reading through some of the documents and books that he has that uh, he's definitely a wizard and a really powerful one at that um you find his notes and some of the you know experiments and things and uh is there a spell book there is a spell book um okay. it is yeah, very hard, like, on the desk and adhering that information also i uh Look towards um, Lorsch, and I go, hold his arms even tighter. If you hold his arms tighter, he cannot use those magics against us. I sit on him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll put the spells in the chat there really fast. You can cut off his tongue. I say, I got distracted, and I can go back to listening to the door. And you speak of us being inhumane? No, no. I just didn't want you to kill him. Ah, torture. That's not when, you, torture. When, I say, when I say torture, I look towards the mysterious figure. <laughs> yeah, that definitely perks my ear. And uh, I hold up uh, a scalpel that I had in my pocket and just kind of, you know, show it to the guy and then get back to reading. Oh. <laughs> Same so starting to like this, this, this mysterious stranger. So, uh, speaking of the reading, in the experiments, is there anything specific or noteworthy in the, or is it just like general it's magic? Kind of like stuff? typical, just dealing with elements and stuff, and you know, different casting circles and things. And uh, you also see what look like a lot of drunken, really sad okay. sack of shit ramblings about lost love. <laughs> okay. Nice. He's not a very good poet at that. Hmm. Right, well, uh, I'll compliment him on his poetry, nevertheless, try to get on his good side. Yeah, you can see he's uh, more nervous that you're finding his poetry rather than his spell book there. Um, he looks Hold so on, alright. I'm gonna uh, 
start reading. I'm going to tell him uh, if he doesn't start talking, I'll start reading his poetry out loud to the rest of the party. Oh, yeah. He looks, he looks like he's in shock. And you can see that he's, he's starting to try to talk with the sock in his mouth. I whisper into his ear, I can remove this sock so you can talk and explain things to us. But remember, the first scream will be your last. And he, he keeps mumbling behind the sock and he nods kind of quickly. Really nervous about this poetry. I remove the sock and hand it to Lorsch, and knowing that the smell of it will not affect her. Oh, no. She takes it and, and, and like, she actually puts it between her lips because uh, she's she's holding his arms down. Mm. Well. Right, had my thing turned down there. Yeah, so he's he's kind of mumbling, and when the sock comes out, he spits a bit and says, Oh, God, how did that get so, so vile? Oh, jeez. But yeah, the, the, the poetry, please, not not the poetry. It's, it's yeah, I'm still working on it, you know. And, uh, to show my meaning business, I'm going to read out the first line. Uh, <laughs> it says, just to. Uh, the the title is Mindel's Serenade. You assume his name is Mindel, and it says, "I think of that girl. She looked like a squirrel." That's the first line. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh man. So I read it out loud to him. Uh, so yeah, I read that out loud to him. Uh, make him nervous. Yeah, and you can see he's starting to sweat a bit. He says, I'm still working on it. He said, All right, let's start talking or I'll keep reading. <sighs> who do you work for? What do you mean, who do I work for? What do you think you are? I'm the person interrogating you. Who do you work for? I work for, for Morgoth, obviously. Every slaver needs a good wizard. And where is this Morgoth? Mm, at this hour? Probably his bedroom, I guess. I don't know. Although, he could be out. I don't know. I don't keep up. You think I care about these things? I just get paid. And I get this. Mind giving us directions to his room? <sighs> yes, I suppose I could point you in that direction. Who are you, though? Why are you here? All right, since he uh, started questioning me, I'm going to read another line from the poem. Oh, <laughs> the next line is, are you a poet? No. Am I a poet? No, but I try. God, this is terrible. And you can see he's wincing. He's probably never heard these out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so is, is he, um, so about the location to his room. Yeah, fine. Give me, uh, Give me a piece of paper over there from my desk. Right. You don't look like you... You look like you would get lost if I just told you the directions, so I should probably draw it out. Uh, maybe gag him if you can let his hands be free. These wizards can be tricky. I missed, I missed part of it, Marcus. I broke up on my end. You said he's wanting some paper for a pen? Yeah, oh yeah, he just wanted like a, perhaps a quill and some ink, you know, draw like a, a map to the... The bedroom with the the slaver. I could offer him my special non cursed pen. Oh, maybe it would be best. Uh, maybe it would be best, uh, Marcus Mysterious, that uh, you do the drawing as he explains it to you. I don't think it's a good idea to to let him have anything in his hands. No. Uh. Let him describe it, and uh, I guess one of us can draw it down. I've heard that when you cut wizards open, magic items fall out of their gut. <laughs> <laughs> you can see panic go across, shoot across his face. He says, what are you talking about? No, I've Madness. heard that before. You obviously that don't listen very well. Huh. Are you sure? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm Quite positive. Uh, does he start describing the uh, the way to Morgoth's room, or you have to rough him up a bit more? He says, "What's in it for me? I don't feel like I should help you. You're being quite, quite ridiculous." 
Uh, do you not remember me telling you that uh, you could right. see the light of day? And just remember, the light of the day is one of the most beautiful, beautiful things you can see, and you could write plenty of poems about that. You know what? <laughs> Sammy is supposed to be looking at the door, keeps getting involved. Uh, wh hold on, maybe we should. Maybe you could change your ways and join us. We have a good dental plan. <laughs> He, he gives you a toothy grin, but you can see that there is only maybe two teeth left in his mouth. Not that good. However, uh, we could use a good wizard as well. Hmm. I don't know. So not only will we not kill you now, but when we're leaving, after we get what we've come for, we'll take you with us. And give you a share of the silver we found. That's correct. You could have silver teeth. You could call it a grill. <laughs> All I really care hey, about is magic and poetry, though. I don't know. But, Sammy, also think about this. You own that theater. He could have a uh, open mic night to have his poetry read. Yes. A great artist like you should be seen by the people. Oh, wow. When, when you say this, you can see his face light up in joy and excitement. And he says, fuck the money. That's, <laughs> don't, it doesn't matter. That sounds incredible. Wow, to have an outlet for my poetry. It'd be amazing. Oh, yes. Fine, you've won me over. You've won my hearts, which is all that an artist really cares about, you know. Ease up, Boris. You can you can ease up. <laughs> so just because we don't trust you, because I don't trust anybody, we're not going to let you completely free until we get you out of here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. Just uh, I'm not going to go anywhere. Wow, the idea of reading my poetry. I'll do anything. Awesome. Okay, so we'll do that. Maybe we'll tie like one hand behind his back or tie his fingers together or do something, but we'll uh, let, let's let him draw the map. Yeah, he'll he'll draw like a rough map to get to the bedroom. And yeah. uh, from what it looks like, the safest route that he draws, which he will give you, I suppose. You're going to, let's see, go down... From this room, you're going to exit south. You're going to go down past one, two hall. You're going to pass up two hallways, one on your right, one on your left. You're going to go all the way down to the ends. Take a right. And go down about 30 feet. And then you're going to get to a parlor, which he draws out, like a sitting room. And then through there, there's another door uh, on the south wall of that. So to the left when you enter that. And then that's the bedroom of the slaver. Before we go here, do you know where the, the dwarf is kept? Well, of course I know where the dwarf is kept, that loud mouth. Yeah, we got to get him too. And he'll, he'll draw uh, that, which is actually kind of on the same route. So maybe you would get to the end of that hallway um, where you would take a right to go to the parlor. He says yep. he draws, if you take a left, uh, maybe 10 feet at the end of that hallway. Uh, it's where they keep the slaves, the slaves room, the slaves quarters. It's a pretty large room he draws out. Oh, slaves. There's a lot of, oh, I guess they're slavers. They should have a lot of slaves. Yeah. Hmm. This could be very interesting. Yeah, he says there's maybe a, a dozen or so men and women being held there. Um, as well as the dwarf. I am asking where the barracks is. Oh, the barracks are close by as well, actually. Um, and he... It's actually the first hallway. As soon as you exit this room to the right, immediately, uh, you go right to you go 15 feet to the right, and then hook a left, and you're at the barracks. So it's really within about 30 feet, 25 feet from where you are now. Okay. Um, and the barracks also have an exit that uh, leads to a hallway that connects to the parlor almost. Um, so. It's all very close. The barracks, yeah. the slavers, the bedroom. Um, all right. What do you think, guys? Um, does he know if the door to the barracks can be locked? Hmm. Well, you know, I am a wizard. Uh, I know a thing or two about locking doors. He mm -hmm. does. Aha, so you could lock the door for us to block them in? Yeah, they're a bunch of bunch of assholes anyways. They all make fun of my poetry. Sure. 
Well, that's because they're buffoons. When we bring you to the city where my theater is, your poetry will... Ah, yes, the city, the cultured city. Heard of the city. All right, so that's it. So you want to lock that door, then go up and, and kill the pirate captain, then get the slaves? That's yeah, point. but it looks like there's a second parlor. There's a door from the barracks to the parlor, is there? Well, it connects to a hallway that uh, kind of wraps around to connect to the parlor. So it's like the barracks maybe are 15 feet from the parlor, plus or minus. Okay. Right, so if we, if we make noise killing the captain, then they'll wake up. But if the door is locked, they won't be able to get out. But just, we need to lock two doors. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to lock the door. We need to lock the door that brings them from the barracks into the main passageway and the door that comes from the barracks through the hallway into the parlor. Both of those doors need to be locked. Why? Why can't we just lock them in the barracks? Oh, you said there's two doors in the barracks? There's two doors to the barracks, yeah, there's a second oh, door. Oh, I thought they were on the same Okay, I got you. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, well, we, we, we can... Well, I don't think we have a way to lock two doors, do we? Can you lock two doors, wizard? Uh, yeah, if you pass me my spell book, I can show you the inscription, the spells that I've written. I could lock two times, I feel. I've been studying. Hmm. Okay. I believe you. Why not? Okay. So that's... We're going to have to put a knife against your throat while you're casting. And if a, if a lightning bolt or something pops out of your ass, uh, you'll be dead. <laughs> And there'll be no poetry, Mac. That's right. Even more important, no poetry. He nods in agreement and says, yes, uh, you all seem like cultured individuals, you know. Art is the highest thing that we can attain. Magic and these things are just distractions, you know. Indeed. I'll just to see. What? Oh, weird. Olorsh is just picking her nose while, while, while he's talking about art and such. Wait, no, just wait till you see the grand theater that Sammy owns. It is it is magnificent. And we have a very, very illustrious barkeep also. It's true. Mm. Okay. The inspiration sounds golden. Now pass me my spell book. I need to check things. Mm, okay. Who has the spell book? Uh, I do. I'll give it to him. And I'm holding the knife at his throat. And he gulps, of course, you know, being reminded of the knife. But uh, yeah, he'll he'll flip through it. He'll get to his uh, his wizard lock spells, make sure that it's what he has in his head. Um, and he says, and he, sh he shuts it. And he says, now, a few other things. And he'll kind of motion that he wants to stand up. Uh-huh. And so he's going to try to stand up, um, assuming that uh, Fugus' knife allows him to. Oh, yeah, but the, the knife will rise as he rises. Yeah, yeah. I'll say uh, over there in that drawer, and he'll point, he'll point to, like, uh, the, the table. There's, like, a drawer under it, and he'll say, in there, potions. You might want them. Ah. Huh. Oh, Sammy, potions. All right, I'll walk up and, and grab the potions so we have them. We'll put them in a bag. Very good. And one of them is labeled healing. Oh. And the other one has a skull on it. Okay. So one is for healing and one is for fixing bones. He cackles and says, aha, yes. Good. So if you break any bones, I'll make sure to give it to you. <laughs> oh, my bones are brittle, but not that brittle. Good. Now, let's get on with this. I'm ready to get out of this, this shithole. We are too. Um, but just before we do, can we ask him, is there any other um, uh, items of value or magical artifacts in the building? Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Magical artifacts, eh? Well, I mean, a lot of uh, Morgoth's, you know, his, uh, his upper cohorts, as I call them, a lot of them do carry magical weapons and things. And it's pretty nice, uh, nice armor, from what I've noticed. Uh, yeah. And I then Jorana, his wife, her sword, oh, her oh. sword and her shield, they're really something. Magic bestowed by the gods, if there were gods, but there aren't. 
Okay. okay. Interesting. What do you think about that mysterious one? Uh, the mysterious one was dozing off and not paying attention. <laughs> so I'm assuming that his wife stays in the same room as him? Um, yeah, yeah. They do sleep okay. together. Yeah. So her, her shit's probably there. So at the very least, we can get that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to run around just killing people to get magic stuff. because No, no. Sorry, it's just in case there was another... Yeah, no, it makes sense. More obvious treasure room or something. <laughs> but... No, no. Uh, okay. He's a, he looks like he's aware that you've probably come through the secret passage uh, where all the real treasure is. Well, I think we even said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm assuming that this okay. thing with, with the skull on it is poison. So I'm going to actually, I mean, she's not stupid. I'm going to show it to, uh, to the thief and, and the mysterious person and say, this could come in handy. So is this, it's like a poison skull of some sort? I think so. It just looks like a skeleton skull. It's not like a skull in crossbones, per se. Can we ask the wizard what it does? I guess we could ask him. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> he, gives, he gives you a smirk and he says, uh, well, that healing potion isn't actually a healing potion. I wasn't uh, actually going to let you drink it, but uh, that's a potion of delusion. Make you kind of oh. mad, you know. The one is the skull. That one is a potion of undead control. Oh, oh I'll, uh, I'll I'll take the undead control, and if uh, if nobody's quick enough to take it first, yeah, go for it. Give me it to my hand. It. I'll hand it to you. As <laughs> as I, can. I, I feel like Sammy's already delusional, so uh, she'll hold on to that one. Nice. Oh. He says no. <laughs> That's everything. Follow me. And he's going to start walking towards the south door of his room. And when, he, okay. when he gets to it, he's going to start to creak it open very slowly and stick his, his old bony head out and kind of look around. And he says, All right, it's clear. Okay. Right, let's proceed, man. And uh, you can see him kind of, he starts to tiptoe off to the right. Uh, and he gets to the, he, hook, he goes, to the right, so to the west. He goes about 15 feet, then he hooks a left, heading south, 10 feet, and he gets to the barracks door. And he kind of raises his, his long fingers, and he starts wiggling them in the air out in front of him, and his eyes get really big. And then he says, okay, it's done. Oh, that was pretty awesome. Well done. You are an artist. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to an old man. I'll be quiet. And he kind of shoes you all back the way that you came, back to the main hallway. Um, and then he says, all right, where are we going? To the your, your dwarf friends? What well, thought we got? Did you lock both no, of The parlor first, yeah. Parlor first. All right, follow me. <coughs> so he's going to start walking. And you pass up a hallway on your left side. It looks like it kind of goes a bit deeper into the fortress there. And he keeps moving straight ahead, so heading south. And after about 50 feet, uh, you get to the end of this hallway. And rounding the corner at the same time, coming from the southeast, uh, there are there are two uh, fighters, two guards, it looks like. Um, just two slavers. Uh, wearing kind of old mundane armor. Um, and you almost bump into... You almost, they almost bump into... Uh, to Mendel, the uh, wizard, and he says, "Oh, my friends, uh, out on the night patrol." And they kind of grumble something and say, "Why? What are you doing out so late, uh, old man? And who are these people?" They're still wearing disguises, huh? Yeah, maybe. Are you guys? Yeah, that's a good yeah. question. Are you all wearing disguises? Yeah, yeah. Never yeah, took them off. Mendel, yeah, that was our. Friends. Yeah, he says, "Oh, these are the new guys. I'm." Uh, Taking him to the mess hall, you know. <laughs> and the guards kind of look at themselves and, and shrug, and they say, "Fine, but uh, you know, don't make that, don't make a mess. Huh, you get it? Mess hall, don't make a mess." And they kind of chuckle and they walk past. They head back towards his room, and you'll see him book a right down that other hallway. Marcus, um, when they start to walk past me, because I'm probably the back, I want to uh, try to use my ring and, and charm them. I'm gonna look at them and go. 
oh, you have such nice weapons, may I see? And then I'm going to try to cast my charm spell on them. Okay, perfect. So they get a save each. Save versus spell, yeah. Yeah, so let's see. So the guy who made the missile joke fails miserably with a six. The other guy is a four. Jeez, so they both fail. So, so I said, well, your weapons are so nice. Why don't, why don't you um, uh, stay here for a minute? I think it's, it's really nice here, isn't it? Mm, it is beautiful in here. Well, let's stay mm. here. Yeah, we'll be right back. Okay, so we'll, I just be right back. Yeah. we'll bring you a chicken. Mm. How, how many hit dice are they? Uh, there are. Go back to the page. You know from uh, they're second level. Um, okay. So, so yeah. two. Yes. All right, good. So I only have one hit die left that I can control. Okay, that's good. I, I, I keep them charmed for now. Okay, cool. Um, just so they don't go anywhere. I don't want them to tell anybody we came this way. Yeah, yeah. Charms. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Great. All right. So, all right. So, uh, Nindo will lead you up to the door of the parlor. And he'll kind of turn back around and give you the whole, like, finger over his lips to be quiet. And he's going to start pushing it open. Um, so what's the marching order? Like, who's behind him? I, I'm right behind him holding the dagger, of course. Okay, cool. So um figures you would see as he pushes it open. Uh, it's a very small sitting room, maybe 10 by 10, uh, plus or minus a few feet. Uh, there's a plush sofa, two comfortable-looking chairs. There's a very tasteful rug in the middle of the floor. On the west wall, there's a large picture of a man in a military uniform. Uh, and this this art looks very professionally commissioned, unlike the wizard's art. Um, the two floor lamps in the opposite corners of the room give the room a warm and inviting air. Um, yeah, and it, 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 you even see maybe a couple wine goblets uh, that look empty or partially empty. And then you also see a door to the to the left against the south wall that uh, you would assume is the bedroom door. And uh, Mendel just keeps his finger over his mouth in the hushed, you know, uh, position. And is there a door in the north wall or the west wall for where we think the barracks comes in? Ah, no, sorry. That was um, this hallway <coughs> that you uh, just came from. There's one that breaks off to the right, right outside this door, um, that uh, has the door to the barracks. Okay, cool. So uh, we'd need the wizard to go to go up and close that door or lock uh, that yes. door. And he'll, uh, he'll tiptoe over there and do the same little thing with his fingers kind of wiggling in the air and his eyes grinning really big. And then he's, he nods whenever it's finished um, in confidence. And he looks a bit tired uh, after this procedure. But uh, yeah, so he's going to kind of hang back, um, I guess, in the center of you guys or so. Um, so whoever wants to lead, I guess, Fergus into the room or? Yeah, I'll continue forward and into the room. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and like I said, you know, there's the sofa, the chairs, the rug, some tables, some wine goblets, and the door. Um, Do the goblets look, fat, look valuable? Yeah, they look pretty nice. Uh, yeah. I snag them. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> some silver goblets. I think you never know when you're going to need them. Uh, okay, so good. I whisper to the to the the stealthy looking uh, duo there. I say, um, "Are you just going to go in there and poke them, like with your swords or daggers or whatever you use?" Uh, I have the ability to uh, called waylay. It's pretty much assassin assassination, but it knocks him out instead. Perhaps that can come in handy. Well, I think if they're asleep, we can probably just kill them, no? We're, we're trying to kill them at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That's true. I mean, so, yeah, I want to do such things. <coughs> yeah, we could, I guess, try to sneak in and uh, silence the sleeping guys. Yeah. I mean, if we go south, we can basically charge in after and, and help you. Yeah, yeah. So, Marcus, any kind of rolls that Marcus needs to make? Yeah, so who's going to try to open the door? Um, so we've got to do that first, I suppose. Like, how do you want to get through the door? I guess I'll try to open it then. 
because I'm thinking, and in my mind, I'm thinking the mysterious Marcus has definitely the uh, upper hand on um, doing uh, assassination type work. Yeah, I'm, okay, I, so I can... Fugus will mess with the door. Okay, so Fugus, the door is locked. I think you would notice uh, as you start to inspect it. Okay. So if you want to Here we go. Nope, 76 out of 45. Yeah, and it just doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't feel like it's coming unlocked there. Maybe you're a little nervous, or something's just not right. Yeah, the sweat the sweat's beating on my forehead, definitely. I look towards Lorsch. <laughs> oh, Lorsch! Lorsch holds out her hand uh, for Fergus to give her uh, to give no for Fergus to give her her mall. Yeah. Um, should Marcus have a go first? Does he know how to do such things? No. I mean, he, he does actually have the ability to uh, pick locks, but it's much lower than a thief's. So I could try. Yeah. But... It's still quieter than an orc. You have a 30% chance. I mean, it's, you know, it's decent. Yeah, 30%. Let's do it. Oh, I got a 62. <coughs> almost. All right. No, yeah, I guess hammer it. Yeah, Marcus seems to be having some trouble here. there too. So. Okay, right, so. Lorsch time. Oh, yeah, Lorsch time. Yeah. Get ready, yeah. Uh, we can get ready with missile, I guess, right? Because they're going to wake up. Yeah. yeah, they're probably not that heavy of sleepers. Hold on a second. Does the door open towards us or away? If it could open. Uh, it would be away. Okay, so you can Okay, that's good. That's perfect for us for missile weapons. Okay, sorry. All right, so Lord, you want to try to uh, open door? Hell yeah. I'm actually going to prepare my sleep spell, just to, just in case. Okay, yeah, go for it. Um, and I'll let, uh, I guess, you, Daniel, since you're preparing that, you can control the wizard if you want. Um, oh, like okay. Combat, like, if, you know, if you can do Does that. Does he have spells? Does that what he's got prepared with any spell book? Everything in the spell book that I listed, except ESP and clairvoyance, he has prepared. And oh. uh, wizard lock, he had two, and... Perfect. Continual light, I think he had two prepared as well. So. Oh, nice. Holy crap. No, Wizard right. Lock and Lightning Bolt, he had two of. Yeah. Right. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's a, he's a level eight magic user. So. Yeah, that was pretty good that we got him wounded. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> really powerful. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, he's How do we do open doors? Uh, it's a D6. Uh, yeah. Oh. And then a one plus if you have a strength bonus. Uh, no. You're a loud boom, <laughs> but the door apparently doesn't budge. That's yeah. a strong door. That door, that door shakes, almost seems to bend, but yeah, it just doesn't open against Lorsch's uh, impressive power. Lorsch uh, looks offended. <laughs> uh, Lorsch, are you going to open it or not? I look down <laughs> at you and then swing it again. All right, we'll go ahead and roll again. Oh hell yeah! Oh, nice. That 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 was that was angering her, and then she put everything she had in that next swing, and yeah, kaboom! Very good. Yeah, and the door completely splinters and shatters and smashes open. Um, there is no door left. Basically, the hinges are barely hanging at this point. Um, and Loris, you're standing there in the doorway and. You see two uh, individuals already standing and uh, reaching for the <laughs> You see the woman you assume is Sharana, the wife of um, Morgoth. Um, she's quite beautiful. The guy's quite uh, attractive, you know, but they're, you know, probably a bit older. Um, well cut, well cut uh, hair and all this. Anyways, but uh, they That's are in like... Type. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> they look very clean, but... Uh... Yeah, they, uh, they're reaching for their weapons. They're not armored, obviously. Um, the woman is, you know, in her, her underwear, same with the man. Um, oh. But the, she's grabbing her shield and longsword while he is grabbing his battle axe. Um, I was had my sleep spell already. Can I cast it immediately? or? Do yeah, to... yeah we'll, um, let's see. Let's roll initiative. Uh, oh. Yeah, so we'll roll initiative as they're, because they were kind of looking up. Oh, actually, they also heard it smash. <laughs> uh, eight for me. Four. 
All right, cool. And they are on a, a six. Oh. Still not first. So um, so actually, uh, Sammy, yeah, you still have the first. Uh, okay. Uh, does the wizard go when I go, or do you want me to roll them separately? Uh, he can go. Uh, mm, yeah, he'll go with you. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try to cast sleep, um, but if they're four hit dice or more, it doesn't affect them, so I don't know if they are or not. Before uh, I do they are... Level nine and level seven. Okay, yes, it doesn't affect him at all. Yeah. Okay, so that doesn't work, and that makes Sammy go. Ooh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it freaks her out. So the wizard, who is kind of pissed off at the fact that, uh, you know, his life has led to this, and he, now he's somewhat, bl and, you know, because he doesn't want to blame himself for what's going on, so he now blames these two uh, fuckheads. So uh, <laughs> he he lets loose, um, a lightning bolt. <laughs> 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 into the fucking room. <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Um, no, no, I don't know. I probably can't hit them both because of the the angle. But I will. I'll shoot at. The, yeah. Okay, sure. Does he know who's tougher? Probably the 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 woman's tougher. I'm guessing. Yeah. So they're both gonna have to do. No, the man's actually tougher. Uh, okay. Or, yeah, he's level nine. She's seven. Uh, now, this is like. Hold on. This could be really fucked up. Hold on a second. <laughs> That's a five foot wide. Oh no, Okay, you can do it. Okay, the range is okay. Now. I think. Oh, they were they were they weren't in bed together, right? No, they were. They're in the same bed. I mean, are they within five feet of each other? That's the question because it only goes five feet wide. Um. No. It turns out they were out of bed or not? That's what Jake should. Well, actually, no, because they're both going to grab their weapons, which are, I'll say, together. Okay. So yeah, they'll be together picking up their weapons and shit. Oh, all right, and they're probably standing at this point. They have their weapons up already from the first hit the Lorsch made. So I think they're standing next to each other, preparing okay. to defend. So. All right. Well, if I can hit them both, I will. Uh, so so stinky wizard comes forward, and he blasts that fucking thing. You know, sixty foot range lightning bolt passes through an area five feet wide, jumping. <laughs> uh, it, well, it's not actually five feet wide. He with a lightning bolt, sets fire. Well, it'll set fire to combustible air things. It'll also melt metals with low melting point, gold, silver, bronze. Uh, I'm just trying to see whether or not it does it like first edition where it bounces around if it doesn't go. Oh yeah. Spell transference. Otherwise it will reflect back from barrier back towards the caster or a random direction. So basically if it doesn't go the full 60 feet before it, and before, is this, if this room's not 60 feet deep, this thing's going to be like a pool ball bouncing around inside this room or possibly back out the door. That's up to you. It's a ten I mean, by ten. It's a ten by ten room. Yeah, he's not. He's not an idiot. So I'm gonna say that he kind of casts it like at an angle. Yeah, he sure. Basically, bounce around in there like a fucking crazy pool ball. Yeah, yeah. And I'll assume Lord should maybe step back at the bus on the door, and you know, you yeah. Guys once you get ten by ten, then it basically bounces around the room. I think that would be roughly three to four times. Okay, so I'll say he cast he, he cast it and pulled Sammy back after the lightning shoots out of his fingers, so you're not in the doorway. Um, yeah. At an angle, so it's basically bouncing on their room. I don't know how many times it will can actually hit them. You can figure that out if you want. Or only once, it. according to the book. Yeah, I think it's just once. Um... You can't get. You don't take additional damage from the rebound. Yeah, once. Yeah, once oh, you don't. Okay, right. yeah. No. okay, yeah, it's the last sentence. All right, so it's only one time. Okay, so that's good. So still... it does Six. per level, and he's eighth level, so he does sixty damage. Okay. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Eight six damage. All right. So let me roll my damage. Still my neck. Oh, that's a good one. And another one. So uh, only twenty-two. Okay, twenty-two. Oh, that's only that's only six. He's eighth level, right? Twenty-two, and then another seven. So twenty-nine points, and they save for half. Oh yeah, let me see if they save. So the guy, the guy passes with a sixteen. So he takes fourteen, I guess. The woman fails. Okay. So she takes twenty-nine. She takes 29, so five, he takes 14. 20, 25, 29. He takes 14. Damn. All right. And no longer stealthy. And you're definitely <laughs> no longer stealthy as lightning is starting to catch the room on fire and shit. Yeah. Um, all right. So. Yeah, so that's what happens on my turn. And they cry out. They're hurting. <laughs> I mean, lightning obviously is very good. So, um, 
So after the eight, it goes to their turn, actually. So they're going to start um, rushing towards... Um, they want to fight. So they're going to start rushing out the room towards you. Um, and they're going to exit the room, and let's see who they're going to attack. So I'll do... From my left, I'll just say a one is Sammy, a two is Lorsch, a three is Marcus, a four is Lauren, a five is Fergus, or a six is Mendel. Uh, so the, the man will attack uh, Marcus, and the woman will attack uh, Fergus. All right, so we'll do the first attack on Marcus. Uh, this is with the battle axe, this one that he is wielding. Oof. Rolls a 16 plus 7 to hit, so yeah, I think he hits you at a 23. Holy crap. Um, and the damage is... Where's my dice? My die. Um, oof, 8 points of damage to Marcus the, Marcus and the Sirius. Um, and the woman will hit with her longsword. Plus 1... Or is he just fighting? Okay, so, the woman swings and she rolls a. So, she rolls a 17 total. Yeah, with the bonus. She yep, that's All right. And. Damage. Wow, one damage. Very good. Cool. Plus one, two damage. Two, okay. But, uh, yeah. Places into you. Um, yeah. So, from the sixes, we go to the fives. So, Fergus, actually. Yeah, but this woman that's charged up to me like this and this this lightning bolt that has just exploded out of nowhere and this chaos that is starting to happen, he looks towards her and he goes, there will be an elegy written about you and the great wizard back here will read it at opening night of poetry night as he takes this plus one short sword out of the scabbard and attempts to hit her. You said she's unarmored, right? Yeah, they're both unarmored at this point. Um, she does have a shield, though. But That's going to be uh, 14 to hit. Okay. Uh, here can triple check. Unarmored in this one was 12, right? Or was it 11? I believe it's 11. It's 11, isn't it? Yeah, let me see. Armor, no armor. It's 11, yeah. So she has a plus two shield, so 13. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you hit. 14. Yeah, she'll take three damage as the sword cuts into her vein. <coughs> okay, great. So one, two, three. Yeah, she's... She's not looking too good. Um, all right, so good shot, Furious. So from the five, the fours, uh, Lorsch. Um, he looks still pretty well, right? Yeah, he's bleeding, but it's not bad. Um, Lorsch is standing there next to the door, huh? and looks uh reminiscing to the to the ceiling and then pulls out a wand grins oh boy and shouts uh whatever <laughs> a command word <laughs> and let's lose lightning as well oh nice yes very nice i just remember that i still That's have right. that thing That's right. the one only two charges left, though. Hold on, I need more. D6. Oh, whatever. Um, six. Four, yeah. ten, Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, um, nineteen damage. Oh, jeez. Okay. And probably the same, like, uh, save for half. Yeah, yeah, he failed his save, so it's gonna be... Okay, yeah, that really messes him up there. He is not looking too good. He is really, really hating white. Very good. Yeah, very. That was awesome. Um, so the, as this light, the second, you know, shower of lightning engulfs this guy uh, from the fours, threes, eights, twos. Uh, Marcus, the assassin, who was uh, struck by uh, that guy. He just got hit by the lightning, by the way. So he's he's hurting. He's hurt pretty bad. Okay, so since I'm at a nice, healthy one hit point, uh, I'll decide to I me mean, directly. You what? You broke up there for me. 
What are you doing? Uh, one health point. So I'm at one health point. I'll attack the guy in front of me. Why okay. didn't you say that? I could have cured you. I don't need curing. <clears throat> oh, there it goes. A four? Is that good enough to hit? A four, a four, a four barely <laughs> yeah. misses. Uh, yeah, no, you're looking for an okay, so him. Try to move away. Yeah, so, yeah, I'll let you move back if you want after you hit. Um, yeah, what about uh, attack of opportunity? Um, yeah, that's a good point. Is there right? isn't one here, right? I don't before it comes to his turn again. Yeah. Don't worry. Let's see. I'll say I'll I'll allow you to move back uh, just because of the, he just got hit by the lightning. I think it just makes sense that he's dealing with that as you're attacking him as well. So you can hop back. I'll slip into the shadows if I can. Yeah, you can just hop back. You're not gonna be able to hide, but uh, I'll say you can no. you can move out of his range. Uh, okay, I'll do that then. Yeah. Great. Uh, and I think at the bottom is Lauren. Okay, so. Um, I who who's left? It's just him left, is there? They're both left, but they're both looking really bad. Okay, so I would like to attack him with my sword. Okay. Uh, let me see. Oh Jesus! Um, so that's a seven. No, that's uh... so least, um. Go back to the top, Sammy and uh, Mendel. Okay, so uh, Sammy will uh, say, "You are a pair of yeasty, rump-held pig nuts," and fling at the lady. And that's a twenty-four, which hits. Oh yeah. And that's uh, four points of damage on her head with the sling. Oh. Oh yeah, that definitely is gonna leave quite a mark, and she's not looking good at all anymore. Or she's looking worse than she was. She already wasn't looking good. The the wizard mm -hmm. being uh, able to do good math, he shoots magic missiles. He shoots two at the gentleman and one at the lady. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Two against the gentleman will do oh, nice twelve. Hold on, on, you have to uh, to roll an attack roll. I think if you split. Oh really? If you attack in this one? Yeah, if, if you split oh. them. Yeah, maybe for, for oh, if you split them, you do? Oh, well, I'm not sure if Basic Fantasy has the same mechanic. I know that uh, Second Edition does. No. As soon no. as you split them, that shit. Oh, well, then I will not split them. Let's see. Yeah, if I'm not sure. Like, uh, like I said, better check. fires multiple missiles. He or she can target a single creature or several creatures. A single missile can strike only one creature. Targets no, it doesn't say that. Before damage is rolled, yeah, it doesn't say anything about. Oh, okay, then it's only second yeah. edition. Okay. So Sorry, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's, okay. good. it's good to know. So twelve hit points against him. Oh, he's dead. Tell me how you, he dies. He gets ooh, uh, five. Okay, uh, they both die. So tell me how they both die. So, so the wizard is again. He's blaming them, like almost like they're his mother and father, and he's like blaming them for all the mistakes he made in life. So he's like. I won't be slaves to you anymore. And he throws his magic missiles, which are actually uh, in the shape of, of, of tears. Huh. Oh, yeah, it's probably quite a dramatic scene. Uh, yep. you're all, you all bear witness to this. It's quiet for a second, and then you hear Sammy go. <laughs> <laughs> and she claps. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, so with, <laughs> with that, you're out of combat. Um, May I suggest we get the dwarf and leave? Yeah. Uh, yes. I was Second. about to say you might you might begin to hear uh, shouts perhaps from the guards back in the hallway, um, echoing through the halls. I do yell. I do yell to Lorsh as we start to move. Though Lorsh, don't forget about the mysterious one. Yeah, yeah. She she's already on her way to the to the body of her, and just rams her finger into her eye. And pulls it out again with the goo, and and comes very close to the mysterious one's brow. If he if he lets her, I, I, but I'm injured to do so. Yeah, I'll follow, and I, I touch you with my gooey finger, and then I do a cure wounds. Nice. If you want it or not. Oh, <laughs> Max again seven. Nice. Oh, nice. So I'm at uh. Eight, eight points, I think. 
Um, I, I would like to pick up the shield before we leave as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going. I was going to say, Lord, uh, not Lord. Who am I? Whoever I am, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to definitely pick up the sword and the, the battle axe in case they're magical or something. Wouldn't take them at least weapons to inspect. Yeah, they're both magical for sure. Uh, so is the shield. They're all very good. Um, okay. Yeah. And unfortunately, their room's on fire, so we can't probably loot them for anything else. So. Uh, <laughs> Listen, Mendel hasn't been able to let loose in a long time. He's feeling better as an artist and as a wizard. That sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, so when we come around the corner of the hallway, uh, I see the two guards that are charmed. They're kind of hanging out over there probably, or maybe they're wondering what the fuck's going on. And I'm like, I think we're under attack. Uh, go down to the armory and bring some more weapons in this direction for us. Ah, uh, yes, attack, Omri, run it, and they first pass you deeper into the, the uh, what should we call it, the fortress there, um, you can hear them kind of, their feet echoing, um, okay, yeah, and you'll, you're, like I said, you are hearing, uh, shouts, you also do hear yeah. behind the barracks, yeah, you hear people shouting, and you hear the doors being, you know, I'm sure smashed smash open. open, yeah, so we want to get the dwarf, um, should some of us stay by the barracks door, I think that's probably a good idea, um, I'm going to stand in the hallway. I guess when we're heading back towards the way we leave, there's that hallway that goes to, I guess, to the east. No, to the west. Well, the one that they destroyed the barracks. Yeah. Off the main hallway. Yeah. 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 Mandel and, and Sammy will stand there. Uh, he's ready with a lightning bolt to shoot down the hallway, and she's ready with her sling. Okay. They, well, I'm assuming yeah. they're going. Yeah, and okay, and I'll join them with my bow. Okay, good. So Lauren, Mendel, and Sammy. Now the dwarves are like directly across from the parlor. Uh, 20 feet away, there's a door. And uh, Mendel had pointed out that's like the slavers uh, where they're staying. The slaves are staying. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if y'all want to go try to get that one open, you can. Whoever's doing that. Yeah, uh, Fergus and Norse. I, I would push Fergus to the side while running. Oh, yeah. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And then Open. the goal is to run through the door. Yes. Okay. Sad I'm missing this. How do I do that? <laughs> uh, uh, because you're running and it's cool, I'm just going to say you can smash it open with, <laughs> without, without rolling. Uh, just because of the momentum. Oh, I boy. Think, your size. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll leave an orc sized gap hole in the door. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Yeah, it's it shatters, uh, leaving a yeah an orc silhouette. And uh, yeah, and inside here it's uh, let's see, uh, so it's twenty by twenty or no forty by forty room, excuse me. Uh, and it's very dark and damp in here, and uh, it smells terrible. I mean, what's it's, that now? It's a dark, damp. Uh, no, wh where did I run into? Is that? <laughs> Oh, the slave room, right? Oh, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's it's dark and it yeah. smells really, really bad. Um, and looking around from the light from the hallway behind you, uh, yeah, you you do in fact see what could only be slaves, just men and women in rags. I mean, there's dwarf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is a dwarf, and he's he's in there and he's sitting kind of by himself in the corner, playing with rocks. Kind of dwarf, around. follow. He, he perks his head up and he says, "Uh, what?" Congratulations, you're being rescued. <laughs> Quote. Well, who sent you? How do I know you're not going to kill me? I look back to Fergus. Fergus is still sitting out in the hallway uh, of this reeking smell, and he's thinking that how can she stand that awful smell? <laughs> and as you look towards him, though, he goes, Ah, good dwarf. It would be best. I think you take your chances with us. Um, we were sent by a good friend of yours, and if you want to live, now's the time. And he also looks towards you, uh, Lorsch, and says, knock the locks off all the cages. Let everyone loose. It's going to be a grand morning. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I go ahead with my mall. Oh, yeah. And they break right off. Uh, they're pretty old rusted box and stuff. And uh, yeah, these people are going to start kind of like creeping out. Little, little wary, but uh, the excitement starts to pick up pretty fast. Um, yeah, and, and the dwarf will, will, will nod and stand up and he'll say, hmm, obviously one of my cousins put you through this. There's, there's much trouble for me. 
All right, let's get out of here. Uh, food is not good here. <laughs> is he just wearing like just common clothes, or is he? Yeah, yeah, no, he's just wearing his common clothes. Nothing spectacular. Yeah, if I, if, I guess if uh, either I or Lorsch had that shield and a long sword, you know, we'd let him use it in case okay. he needs it on yeah, the way yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so, and he's going to be level four dwarf uh, fighter, I suppose. So um, if Dikey comes to that, those are his stats. And uh, yeah, yeah, so he'll take that for sure. And he looks like he's handled a weapon. Uh, shield might be a little big for him, but he can handle it. All right, so what's the plan now? Things are starting to get... You can hear more shouting. Um, the door to the barracks. Let me go back to that really fast and check that. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Um... Hey, Marcus, heads up. I got to leave at like 5.30. Okay. Um, yeah, we're, um, we're going to be wrapping up uh, pretty soon, I think, as soon as you'll get out. Okay, you know. I was just going to say, I, I could just make my character mysteriously slip into the darkness. And Okay, you want to shoot out now? You got to get ready? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't yeah, want no, like, totally to like, stop the thing earlier. So. No, I can have him, uh, we'll say he's already snuck out the, the fortress and, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually do have a maybe, uh, climb walls ability. Yeah, maybe he snuck out to go signal the ship to get ready or something, so yeah. uh, that's fine. Yeah, no problem. Definitely, no problem. Okay, wait, let me roll climb wall, because I want to climb out the wall, because that sounds really cool. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> windows. Well, they're definitely are windows. Four. So I've got an 81% chance. Roll the 74. Okay, so I climb out the window and uh, make my way out. Yeah, you can go signal the, the, the ship. Yeah, cool. Well, it was fun. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I'll probably join next time. Yeah, for sure. Have fun. Uh, have fun in your bye time. bye. Okay, yeah. Sean. Bye. Enjoy it. <clears throat> um, so let me check the doors for the wizard lock. Um, no, they can't. They can't open it. They they're gonna keep. Oh no, they're gonna try to break it. Okay, let me roll some attacks for that. So, let's see. Okay, so I rolled a 20 in the first roll. So the door starts to splinter. Um, Sammy and Lauren, Lauren you would see that. And uh, they're going to be able to break it open uh, in a, probably a couple minutes. All right. Once we see them, the whites of their eyes will blast them. Okay. Can, um, can we see each other? Like, are we close enough that Sammy could, could see where we are and, and hear us or not? Yeah, definitely. Y'all are like, maybe... Uh... Aren't they, they're around a the corner, though, aren't they? Yeah, right around the corner, maybe 15, 20 feet. Oh, well, I'm going to run to the corner then, if, if I can, and, and look around the corner and yell down at Sammy. I'm sending you some help. Give them weapons when they get there, as you see all these commoners or whatever running towards you. Okay. Yeah, but we'll shout back that we should leave by the north door as soon as possible. Yeah, we need to get the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. So do y'all want to just run uh, down that hallway? Or do y'all want to stay and try to fight the uh, whatever? Well, no, we're going to leave as soon as we have the prisoners. I want to try to leave with as many people as we can. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, y'all can yeah, those, yeah. One yep. of those two guards, they were bringing you a bunch of weapons too, weren't they? That's what I was getting at. Well, they were, but I don't know if they're back yet. Okay. Let me check. If they come back. Okay. And the problem okay. is if they come so... back, they might see what we're doing, and they're probably not going to be too happy with us, even under attack. <laughs> Yeah, so they are not on their way back yet. Something might be keeping them um, okay. elsewhere. And, and again, you are hearing shouting, so you might start to hear the sound of weaponry. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but you could start directing them towards the wizard's room down that long hallway if you want. Yeah. Uh, there are, uh, I think I said a dozen of the slaves. Yeah, there's a dozen. So there's like, let's just say... Seven men, you know, and uh, five women. Uh, yeah, y'all can start shuffling them down. Um, it won't take long. I mean, this is all going to happen real fast. So, um, y'all want to just run out with them now, or do you want to? Yeah, I feel like what I would do is, as like, the rest of the group is leading the slaves past, yeah. like I would be myself and the wizard, and, and I'm assuming I don't want to speak for Lauren, would like wait till it passed us and then go. Okay, so yeah. the second barrage on the door to the barracks, it seems like they're having some trouble. Okay. So uh, that'll buy you a couple more minutes again. Uh, yeah, so again, it's happening very quickly. I think you can get the slaves out into the wizard's room. 
um if y'all are running you know like oh, yeah, y'all can do it yeah. pretty fast yeah no problem um so you can make your way out the fortress there back through this the passage mm -hmm. um and you can definitely you will hear shouting and things coming from up above but it sounds like the the uh, guards are at least occupied with they think that it's something inside the fortress going on um right yeah so you're, you're hearing more shouting behind you probably more footsteps heading towards the, the the room of the slaver and all this but um yeah i think it's enough of, of a distraction to where you can make your way back to the uh, what was the eastern side of the eastern side of the island where yeah. uh they not digging uh, what's his face marcus is um flagging down the uh the vessel that brought you Okay. You can see that it's approaching. So um, I think I, I think you, you can make your escape no problem. Um, okay. Yeah. So in yeah. due time, you're back on the boat, uh, successfully having grabbed the dwarf and all these slaves. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, I guess we can end it there. Actually, it's probably a good spot. So we can pick it up uh, with the return. You know, next time with the. Bringing the, getting this guy back home and all that. Uh, to work Perfect. Yeah, yeah that was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good. Hope yeah. It, hope it was cool. It was uh, quite improvised for the most part. So, you know, we'll see. Hope it was all right. But uh, let me kill the broadcast. I had a good time with you guys. Uh, and then I'll dish out some, some XP and stuff.